let's start the show. It's January 17th, 2013. Welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. Will Smith, joining me today, back from CES. Norman Chan, how you doing, sir? I'm doing okay. I actually miss that intro. I, I, at some point over this past weekend, I thought to myself, boy, I really wish we had the podcast intro for the CES shows. And, I, and then I realized I did not remember what that intro sounded like. I, I could have sent it to you. We, we have the now, technology to get that file We did not have you. the technology to really play it back. Oh, that's true. Wirecast, right? Oof. Mistakes were made. We learned a lot of lessons at CES. No, I'm glad we didn't have to lug, you know, expensive equipment. No, not, not hauling the TriCaster to CES is the, the right caster. decision. But uh, joining us on the on the uh, table today, Wesley Fennell. How are you doing, sir? Hello. I am far am side of the table. Remarkably not sick after CES. I, I don't think anyone was good sick. Good on you. None of us were sick. Yeah, none of tested yeah. crew was sick anyway. It felt great. We Washed your hands heard constantly. The, heard the sniffles. Saw the Purell. Used it. And we're all sick. Despite... Being in the cold in the winter in the desert. Did it snow? Was there CS snow? It snowed in my heart. Oh, it's not ice skating. We had frost this morning in Pacifica. We don't have frost very often. I had to scrape the windshield. It's the one time a year. Um, Wesley Fenlon, I heard a horrible rumor about you and CS, and I want to get to the bottom of this right Uh-oh. now. Oh. It is my understanding that you carry a backpack when you're I walking did. around CES. This year, I did take my backpack. And, and it was a conscious decision the morning of leaving for CES. Yeah, I actually had my shoulder bag packed the night before. Like a messenger bag, like messenger grown-ups bag. carry. Yeah, um, that I brought today. Okay. Um, and it was what I had last year. And last year, the combination of that messenger bag and the 5D Mark II around my neck every day really was not comfortable at all. You had a 5D Mark II around your neck? The whiskey one? Well, that was a 40D. 30D. For, sorry. 30D. Yeah. Um, it was still heavy. I was like, what? And the messenger bag, yeah. I pro- like, I didn't have a lot of stuff with me, but between MacBook Air and, like, notebook and, like, a water bottle and stuff, like, it added up. And short of getting some kind of, I don't know, like, fuzzy padded strap for the, for the shoulder harness, like... I don't think the padded strap makes a whole lot of difference. It does not. It probably wouldn't yeah. have. M- much uh, like the professional arm wrestler has one giant forearm on one side, yeah. the professional conference goer who wears a shoulder bag has one bulging shoulder. Hold on. Do you swollen. not switch? No, you don't switch. Oh, I switch. I switch. No, yeah, you switch. rotate. You go from a side yeah, to side. No. I also, in my uh, final years of high school, one of my prized possessions was a hybrid shoulder bag backpack made by Oakley. Wow. That's it pretty was, extreme. It was not a shoulder bag. They have the really thick kind of padded was, backpack-like strap, right? But it was one shoulder only, but the backpack still went on your back and not on your waist. Well, but the thing about I a backpack. how, what a bad bag that was. Well, how many books were you carrying around in your final year of high school? High school was a lot of books. Yeah. The, the well, there's, okay, there's two possible tangents off of this, this conversation. Because now, I learned the other day that kids carry like rolling suitcases to haul their books around tangent in high number, school tangent the first wait wait okay i, I okay so you this is choose your own okay. podcast adventure. I, okay. tangent the second is that backpacks it, it, like the straps put distributing the, the weight on your shoulders is not the goal of a backpack you're supposed to put the waistband on which lets you carry it on your hips where you can carry much more weight for a longer period of time i'm going choose to choose your I'm, tangent I'm, I'm going to put my finger in the second uh tangent to hold it that spot Okay. I believe on page 75, but I'm going to flip to page 36 and go for the rolling backpack because I, I feel like that's going to lead us somewhere. This is for elementary school kids mostly, but I saw I, I was driving to work the, the other this, day. The, the, okay, because this, this is not what I saw in 21 Jump Street. Now, if they had had this in 21 Jump yeah. Street, that is the definition of zero strapping. It's it. a major cultural shift. But when Channing Tatum says he wished he could zero strap it, he one straps it. If he could, he could zero strap it. Yeah. I think what he was me- he meant to say was he wished he had a rolling backpack. He, he wished he had a rolling bag. So 
rolling into elementary school and the, uh, you know as kids were coming Are back they, to school the other day they were literally all rolling like little little rolly suitcase bags wow is it is it like, like jazz carry on. Wait, were Are you they... in an elementary school no, no i drive you, by one that, of the way that to work. beard is not allowed to go to elementary no, school it's, okay it's, it's, i just wanted to clarify i just drove up with my van i was like hey kids any of you want some ice cream tangent the third um, um, Rolly backpacks. I want to know if anyone out there who's not in elementary school, whether it be high school or college, actually uses a Rolly backpack. So I asked about the Rolly backpacks with friends who have elementary school age kids. And I've done some research. What's on the consensus? This. Uh, so apparently, there's some research that showed that kids carrying more than like 20 or 25 pounds worth of books in their bags, which happens at like third grade now, are compressing their spines. They're fucking up their backs for life. Basically, so, so you gotta either fuck up your back for life, yeah, or your social standing. Yeah, well, I think the Choose idea is your own that adventure, kids. they all gave their kids rolly bags for Christmas so that they wouldn't fuck up their backs wow. long term. So there's got to be social uh, order, a ladder for the rolly bags. Oh, I'm uh, sure that like the kid who has like the the Samsonite is the bottom of the pecking order, or maybe no, way no, on the top. no, no. Excuse me, the Samsonite one's a nice one. You, you <sighs> what you don't want. Is a Ninja Turtles one? No, Ninja Turtle rolly bag. In elementary school, come on. Depends on what grade. I mean, maybe the turtles aren't in right now. What do you? But what do you thematically uh, appropriate? Are, it depends on whether you're in third grade. Are or these sixth the same grade. luggage bags they sell for travel? The kids have because kids in airports. I think so. Yeah, have the rolly bags for travel, or are they made for school specifically? Like, is there a pouch that's for lunch? I think this and is then, a market op. We should Kickstarter this. I don't think they go that far in thinking about what goes in what power. Are there replacement wheels? Step one: Let's license my no, little pony. They cost like twenty bucks. They're not going to. They just want you to buy a new one when your kid breaks it. You yeah, gotta have, you got the the, fir, the the important part of a rolly bag is how strong the the bar is when it pulls out the the hinge because when you pull. No, 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 no. It can easily snap if you have a plastic the, bar. The important part of the rolly bag is that the, the it, all four wheels are spinny. You you don't only four drag. Wheels? Yeah, I have four wheels on my rolly bags. This is the best because you can hold it beside yeah, you. you. Can turn. You can, can turn rotate. it. It's like it's like it it's rotates. like a little ballet of the carry-on. It's a ballerina bag. carry-on bag. Yeah, it's the bomb. It's very frou frou. Um, I, I would not want a bag with wheels at CES because there are too many people. But I think they disallow that actually. But I would say in elementary school. Or not elementary school, but like in in high school, when you have a lot of books to carry, as lame as that is, it would have been. Pretty and you nice know what? To not it have turns to carry into a weight. seat. It turns into a yeah, chair. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, there's many, many, many useful purposes for the rolly bag. All right, so now going back to page seventy-five because this obviously went to a dead end. Okay, page thirty-six. Dusting off that old classic. Um, if I remember, the other tangent was that you're supposed to use your hip straps. Now, this is something I, I think any Boy Scout knows. When you have Absolutely. a backpack, yeah. you're supposed to put the weight on your hips and not on your shoulders. I do not know that, oh my God, Joey's doing push-ups. I do not know uh, of any modern backpack that has waist straps. Mine, oh. mine actually does have them, but I don't use them. They're usually tucked in. You're like they, By default, they come tucked in. So they're into like a little pouch so they don't flap around and get caught and stuff. Because I'm sure that somewhere, somewhere, a kid has gotten his like his like backpack strap stuck in a subway I, door. I, I'm gonna go thumbs down on the waist strap for school. Oh, absolutely. And books, but I will go thumbs up for tightening the straps and not sagging the backpack. Sagging which, the but, backpack, which is what everyone did. Oh, I like which a low is what ride. Everyone yeah. did. Yeah. But no, you got tight backpacks are the way to go. Tight straps on both straps. I think it's totally dependent on how much weight you're carrying. Because you know you don't want to be that kid who has like a loose backpack but it's really heavy with five books, and as you're running down the hall, it bounces because your shoulder straps are so loose, and you got to hold on to them. You're kind of like a velociraptor, kind of like huffing down the hallway. Flop, 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 flop. Um, at CES, did you use your waist strap, Wes? I didn't, but I was only carrying probably I don't know six pounds of stuff. Ooh. All you carry, it's you take. I, I had the, my MacBook Air. Yeah. Uh, I had my MacBook Air charger. So that's three and a half pounds. Um, I pounds. had like a couple, like energy bars. Okay. A bottle of water. It's fascinating so far. You know, like some headphones, pens, pair, spare pair of socks. The heaviest your bag no. is going to be at CES when you take it to the airport and to the hotel, and when you leave the hotel and go back to the airport, because that's when you have everything. multiple laptops, yeah. tablets, all your chargers, batteries, everything. But all that stuff stays in the hotel. Yeah. That's the smart place to leave that. Leave leave that at the at the hotel so that the maids can enrich themselves with your with your, their ill gotten booty. Yeah. So my backpack was pretty light, and 
uh, I would say that even after spending hours on the floor wearing it, never really had sh sore shoulders. So did you see anyone else toting a backpack on the floor of CES that I, wasn't like a camera dude or something? Because, I mean, Joey carries a backpack, but it is a big-ass, like, professional-ass camera backpack. I would say that I'm sure I did, but I honestly do not pay attention to other people long enough to to remember whether they have shoulder bags or backpacks or whatever. Okay. Plenty, well, of, plenty of people with swag bags. Yeah, um, I mean, that's a mistake. A lot of the people you see at CES aren't really carrying stuff with them. They're just browsing. Yeah, walking um, with a notepad and a pen, maybe, some right. cards. So I didn't really, I don't remember. There you go. But there were 150,000 people there. There was probably at least one other guy with a backpack. Hmm, I don't know about that. Uh, Norm, did you see any backpackers? I did not see any backpackers. Hmm, interesting. Okay, uh, do we want to talk about CES stuff or do we want to jump straight into the news and then do CES? Let's Save do, CES for later. First. Uh, Facebook this morning has no. Uh, that's when we say this morning. Well, Tuesday, we're recording Tuesday a little early morning. due to the impending birth of my child. Um, Facebook has a press conference on Tuesday morning where they announced uh, social search, social graph search, graph search. Yeah, which is um, I don't think people, most people know what. If you said to the layperson social graph, they would be very confused. So isn't that like your calendar and like what you're doing and things like? It? No, no. So, so social graph is the idea of the social graph is it's all the connections that you have with other people and places and things that are contextual only to you or to people who know you, right? I mean, do you think that's a fair... So whereas Google knows that uh, Yosemite National Park is uh, the first national park. It was founded by Teddy, uh, Teddy uh, I almost said Ruxpin, Roosevelt in the uh, early cool. 20th Teddy century. Ruxpin's yeah, it'd be awesome. Yellowstone National was Park. Was he friends with Smokey? No, but, he, but uh, Grubby hung out at the park. And uh, anyway... Uh, Google knows that stuff. Google knows facts about the place. But Google doesn't know that you went to Yosemite in 2005 and that you took a bunch of pictures there with your parents and, you know, all these so different cross-reference of data things. that you provide. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all the data they've been collecting since 2006 is now being used and fed into this, this search engine. So you could ask things like, um, hey, uh, w w I want... I want to know all of the – I want to see all the pictures that my friends took at Yosemite, right? Uh, and then it will show all the pictures that your friends took at Yosemite and who was in them and all that that kind of stuff. So you can – so previously to get that information, you'd have to go to everybody's profile pages. If you have two or 300 friends, that can take a long time. Uh, the other interesting thing is it's going to let you sort your friends by both location and, like, the things that they like. So you can say – Oh, okay, I really like girls, and I want to have a HBO Girls viewing party. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you clarified that it was a TV show, Girls. Right. I, was, I felt that was important. Yep. Um, season premiere this week. Yeah, it was, it was very two. good. No, no, watching. No, no, not very good. You didn't like it? No, no. Nah. Oh, they leaned into the things that made it good last season. No. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, if you wanted to find out which of your friends in San Francisco like girls, so you could invite them over for a girls viewing party. It's capital G. Capital G. This is, this is mm -hmm. out of context. This sounds real creepy. Yep. You need to get off this quick. Um, if you want to watch Boardwalk Empire with a bunch of friends who like Boardwalk Empire, then you can go and search for friends in San Francisco who like Boardwalk Empire, and Facebook will then tell you that. And they can tell you that based on the things that you've liked in the past, things you've talked about, I assume, in your wall and in, in feed posts and all that kind of stuff. When would you ever use this? Um, if I wanted to have a board game group. I wanted to get people over to play board games. I bet that there are people that we don't know that play board games that like playing board games. We don't have that kind of information. I don't think this is a useful thing. I think it's neat. I think it will become a different invisibly way useful. Them using their data. Yeah. All the well, data they have. Our data. Our, our data that we've given them. Yeah. Um, I, I can't imagine. Like uh, one of the other things they showed was a restaurant drill down for restaurants. So, for example, you would say – you could, you could. This, sounds, this is going to sound a little bad. This is maybe even worse than the girls thing. But you could ask. You could say which of your friends are from India and which Indian food restaurants do they like, and then wow. you get the super drilled. This was this was this is Facebook's example, not mine. Really? Yeah, they, they did said this on stage. First sort all, by all Indian friends. No, then... first they searched for spicy food, and then they searched. Then they limited that to people from India, or friends of. People who have friends in India or something like that. So you can do friends of friends and all sorts of other stuff. Can you do racist searches on you Facebook? You can do now? racist ser searches on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so there you go. Uh, it seems like it's it's. You could also search by relationship. So one of the other things is if you met somebody at a party, you don't really know who they are, but you know that they have three kids and they went to Wesleyan. 
then you could say who is a friend of Wes's who went to Wesleyan and has three kids, and it'll pop up with a list of people. I'm really confused about who these people are now. Well, I don't think you have any friends who have three kids and went to Wesleyan. I was just using you as a stand-in for someone else. Good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing. Facebook. Oops, okay. Uh, no search, phone. Search I think it was graphs. a bigger thing that so many people expected Facebook to announce a phone, and I, they have outright said they are not making a phone, and whether you can you know, try to read between the lines. Read between the lines, dance around the words. Uh, they, one, are sh- sure, unless they're straight up lying, uh, are not making a physical phone, and uh, they already had their attempted partnerships with HCC. HCC and f- uh, other hardware makers, and it's unlikely that they will make a phone. I, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense for them to make a phone. So coming into this, I was, I was not expecting... Like, I was not optimistic that they were going to be showing something that I was even remotely interested in. And um, this is actually kind of interesting. And while I, I can't see using it on a like daily basis as a life-changing thing, it could be useful occasionally, which is better than I was hoping for. Sure. So. The fact that they made a big hour-long press conference about it is one to, you know, obviously reassure advertisers and shareholders. Well, so that is the other side of this. You mentioned advertisers. The other side of this product as a consumer-facing product is that there will be an advertising component to this as well. Very clearly. I mean, if Facebook doesn't do anything for consumers, they don't also do for advertisers. So advertisers will have the, the same exact functionality, which they probably already have, to say, I want to advertise to people who like... Uh, spicy food. Spicy food. Also from India. And are from India in San Francisco. Buy a cheeseburger. Right. Wait, don't buy a cheeseburger. No, that's... You know cheeseburgers, dude. That is what you absolutely yeah. should not do. Um, it seems like people, uh, at least people on Twitter, s- seem to think the big... The big thing to come out of this is that it's using Bing search, or or at least Facebook is using Bing search related I, to to this, and as opposed to Google search, and that's like a diss in Google's face. Uh, but Microsoft has, has invested has, in Facebook. Yeah. So There's yeah. no no surprises there. Microsoft owns what a, a small percentage of very, Facebook. Very very small at this percentage point. of Facebook. Five hundred million dollar investment. Um, well, five hundred million dollar investment early though. So early, yeah. yeah, the um. I, I don't think that's I don't think that's a particular big deal. Yeah, speaking of kind of racist advertising and searches, have you guys noticed that late night ads are getting, you know, don't watch late night. You don't watch like South Park on late at night. You don't oh, record like, that you're stuff. You're not late night TV. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's no. all it's all it's always Xfinity. been bad. Okay, Netflix and Xfinity. I just remember Girls Gone Wild ads in the the Comedy Central heyday of. It's of still South just Park as bad, big. but now they're a little bit racist in addition to being sleazy. So it's like dating sites and stuff like that. Real specific. Oh, like the? Do they still have the ads for the phone like sex lines? Yeah, they have that. Or the, the phone lines. like meetups? Or Call whatever. us and have fun tonight. They like they imply so much, but you probably just are calling some random person who, you know, and you pay a ton of money, and you don't even you don't even get anything good from it. Man, you sound really disappointed. Yeah, you, <laughs> you sound like, I mean, should you do a review of this sound product sound category? Burn. Not speaking from experience or anything. Uh-huh. I'm just saying. Seems like raw deal. Which one did you call? The, Seems the like horny Alaskan ladies or locals raw, in your area? That was Evangeline Lilly 10 years that ago. Would, that would be yeah. worth it. Well, Tina Fey from 1985. No. I wish I could remember the name of one of those things now because they're always hilarious. It's, it seems like they seem like joke. Like if they came on during Saturday Night Live, you'd think it was a joke ad. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, should we talk about CBS and the Dish Network and CNET and, and sure. controversy? First, let's talk about the Hopper. Yeah, so did you guys see this? We didn't see the hopper. You're not DVR guys at nope. all. Nope, yeah. I, I don't want to pay for the booper boops. I like the hopper. I like the idea of, A, I like the name, the hopper. It seems like it would be either some sort of thing that moved really in a, in a massive, like, like a, like a, a I guess conveyance that, from Metal Gear. That's something that Dennis Hopper kind of owned before then. Well, he's dead now. So. I, I, I know that. Yeah. But the hopper. Yeah, the hopper. Um, so the hopper is a satellite receiver with DVR with massive capacity and I think four tuners. Is that right? It can record four things right. at once. Something uh, like I've had two tuner DVRs for the better part of 10 years now. I have ever so rarely encountered a situation where one thing was recording on one channel and I wanted to record something on another channel and I did that and then there was a third channel that I wanted to record something on. That never happens. And, and yet... You're pack ratting at that point. And, and yet, we, you know, living within one tuner household, totally fine. Well, so the place that... Well, you also have uh, on-demand, which feeds, fills in a lot of gaps. 
Um, the place that you might want to do that is if you're like watching football or something like that and Saturday, you know, Sunday rolls around and you or Saturday college football games are 16 games on. You maybe care about two or three teams. I can I can see it in that case. Politics junkies want to and, watch and debate has, coverage on yeah, four channels. Right, right. And Dish yeah. has NFL exclusives and yeah. So there, I mean, there is a use case for that. And sometimes boneheaded uh, network TV programming people put four things on at the same time that that are all tied to the same demographic because NBC wants to fuck over Fox and Fox wants to fuck over ABC and ABC. Well, will the Hopper let you do the Situation Room where you can have all the feeds on one? I don't know about that. That's interesting. Because that's what I want for like election coverage. You want the big wall. I, I want a, a big wall of uh, a grid of, yeah. of at least four channels. I can see that. I think that's a good idea. So anyway, um, the hopper, the, the thing about the hopper that the Dish Network is doing that's getting sued by everyone, though, is that they're doing a 30-second fast-forward skip. That's, it's basically like smart. TiVo has done 30-second fast-forward skips for a long time. Replay TV did 10, 15 years ago. What Dish Network is doing is they're they're watching the stream and they're being a little smarter, so it just automatically fast-forwards through commercials. So as opposed to the TiVo, where I just hold down the button and watch, boop, boop, boop. and then mash the button and it rolls back to just at the start of the boop, com- boop. commercial, with the Dish Network, you just press the, the skip commercial button and you're and done. It, it knows. It's, yeah. it's smart. Smart advertising is skipping. Uh, and this is what television channels and executives are networks fearful of. networks are very fearful i wouldn't say fearful i would say terrified or mortified is probably closer to scared it scared shitless scared shitless is good yeah um so cbs and abc and i think most of the other big networks are suing dish network over this technology because they're basically saying look it's theft um but and, cnet enter really cnet liked it. <laughs> yeah so cnet does the best of ces awards every year and and just to be Perfectly clear about how I don't know how specifically how the CNET awards work, but many of the awards informed editors make a judgment. The about sarcastic the, air quotes. The, the best there, things, Chad. the best things they've seen at CES. But the way they usually work, or and at least I they seen, did in the magazine days. You mean you look at a picture of it? No, no, no. It's not that bad. Not, usually, not CNET. I'm not talking about CNET. Oh no, I think for CNET because there's so much to see and you can't obviously see everything. Uh, things people come to them to their booth. Well, and, it's and not have, even that they their... come to their booth; it's that they send the products in before the show starts. Yeah, or, typically, maybe yes. not particularly, not necessarily in CNET, but all the magazine awards. In order to make print deadlines for CES, you have to have that stuff crazy early. Um, anyway, CNET picked the hopper. They voted as a staff, and the winner of the best of CES amongst their was staff this, was this like really the number one best of CES, or was this just one of those? Best of CES. Here are fifty things that are according the best of CES. to The Verge. Okay, who had an exclusive breaking from unnamed sources. Exclusive breaking, breaking. unnamed sources. Um, the the uh, hopper was chosen by the staff, independent of outside influence, as as the best of CES. As the, the number one. one. Be- wow, really? So we're. I, I'm skeptical of that choice. I mean, I didn't see the hopper. And I'm not a DVR person, but there are many other things up for contention. Well, but they only and I that's think they, they chose. I think they only include things that are actually on display at CES. So like things like the Oculus, which are in a hotel suite someplace, are off out no, of no, consideration. No, no, no. That's still part of CES. Oh, was that was like, it at the was it, were they the Venetian c- has CES signs. Okay, so they but were they in a hotel suite They're or they in a hotel in a, suite? But it was still part of the official CES like institution. Are you sure? Yeah. When I walked down the hall, suite. it said CES, CES, oh, okay. and booth numbers. Okay. Yeah, just to go back a second, because uh, they weren't in the they weren't in the list of exhibitors. The no, no, but when you search for a list of exhibitors, they weren't listed either. Looking on CNET's website, it looks like the Hopper was just one of their best of CES picks. So that's what, what that's I what that's what CNET says. What I'm telling you is that The Verge had breaking unnamed sources that said it was actually the winner of best of CES. I, I think this is I'm, fancy award semantics. I hate I'm, those awards where they go. But they give 50 best of so, awards. So the the report said that yeah, 50. word came down from the president of CBS, which owns CBS Interactive, which owns CNET. Leslie. Leslie, Leslie Moonves. Leslie the dude, Moonves. Les, is I think what his friends call him. Which also owns Mr. GameSpot. Spot. And Giant Bomb and Comic Vine, a mm. bunch of other chow, um, TV.com, many properties. It's a, you know, they have a lot of the internet. Um, came down and, and said, no. Can't do that. Nope. Denied. Revote. Do it over again. Uh, and the, the hopper uh, can't be considered. Your opinion is wrong. No, 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 no. It said that basically what they said was we're in litigation with these people and you can't, you can't uh, review, air quote, 
a product that we're in litigation with the parent company of. So because there could be a perceived conflict of interest. I don't think that I think that they it is unclear what the motivation for this because was. Because you will like it. Because, because you are all signs say you are liking it. Right. Um and you can kind of see at least like from an optimistic point of view, you know, the CBS legal team coming to them and saying, hey, this is bad for our case, you need to do something, and then the president doing something about it, and then it just completely spiraling into, you know, terribleness after that. Well, yeah. so, yeah, the, so the problem is uh, a, that this is a breakdown of editorial independence for CNET. Um, there have been many reactions to this on the interweb this this last week. Um, some of them are, 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 I think, fair. Some of them are completely blown out of proportion. I feel like this is a gross violation of CBS, CNET's editorial independence. Does it warrant resigning? Uh, I, I, so does it warrant resigning is a tough question. Uh, if I were working there and I were young enough that I had money in the bank to live for a few months and get freelance and stuff like that, I would have hit the door. Uh, if I had three kids and two of them were in college, I would immediately start looking for a job. But I, it's difficult as you get older to to stroll at the moment something bad happens. Um, I, I can't imagine that people are going to stay there for long. I mean, we've already seen a couple of people re resign um, and and it makes it I, – I mean, I think a lot of the problem uh, – so just to be fair, CBS has said, hey, we're not going to interfere with news coverage of this stuff in the future. But reviews – Fuck you guys. We're you do what we say. And so they've suddenly created a line that says product reviews are not journalism, but news is right. This is why we're talking about this. Actually, I, I think actually product reviews, in the context of a consumer electronics site targeted toward people who buy stuff, not people who are investors or or analysts, is is much more important than news. You know, product reviews. People go out and spend their money based well, on product reviews. Much important reviews. than. News, the way what news is today. Well, the way we treat news, definitely. Even the way people who I think report news, if your product reviews are no good or are crooked, even worse, um, then 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 why would why should anybody trust your site at all? Is the mm -hmm. way I look at it. So um, it's an unfortunate situation. CBS posted a explanation, not apology. Um, I mean, the good news was Razor ended up getting the uh, uh, the Razor Edge was the best Razor of show? Edge is the best of show now. That the dish had to be uh, re recalibrated. The f fuck. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's also talk about another big story in um, in, in editorial in editorial independence uh, this week. Are you going to talk? Is this and about? Uh, this is about a milestone year. <laughs> for Scientology. Mine's the milestone year for Scientology. Scientology is doing great. Oh, my God. How many new churches they open? Is That's, it 2,000? I heard there's one in San Francisco. So many. And, and those commenters. How positive. Do we have a local Scientology church? Oh, sure, of course. Can we go? No. Don't go. No, no, no. If you go there, do, you, do, do, they, do, do they do Sunday service? Yes, they, uh, they do service any day. You can get your thetans tested. Ooh. Um, you're, a, you're a prime candidate, Wes. You're in your mid-20s. You're single. Sing, you're single, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're single. You're you're looking for your path in life. So they could help you find that. You should do an in-depth report. I'm intrigued. By talking about this now, you, they, you've, they, they won't let you in. They'll know. Um, so The Atlantic has started doing sponsored content. And and advertorial posts, I've I've always found them kind of distasteful. You know, I've fought over the years with different publishers. Have you ever been fooled by advertorial report. posts? I mean, prior to this week, in, in either print or web. Um, I, I find that it's... Difficult to fool me, like because we worked in magazines and know what to look for, the sponsored content or advertorial at the top of the page. It's really tough. I, I just find the idea of paid content masquerading as editorial content to be very distasteful. The, the spectrum of uh, sponsored posts and how, how they're presented is really interesting. They can be very glaring that it is a sponsored post. Like and, a magazine fold out uh, for a car. Exactly. Like the, that. the paper is going to be different. It's not going to have the actual page numbers on there. And it looks very ad. It doesn't uh, use the same font and, and graphic design style as the rest of the publication. And it can go all the way to having the same writers yeah. as the edit staff, the same f the same uh, edit, uh, creative treatment. For yeah. the, the art, and and then the, a very small signposting of it being a sponsored post. So, in my perspective, advertorial that looks that the the line is graphic design and writers. If the graphic design is different, if it is obviously a different 
type of content than what is typically in the magazine. That's okay. The people who are writing on it, if it's an editorial magazine where you're where you're doing product reviews or news or whatever, uh, the people who are writing on the magazine or the or the website shouldn't work on the advertorial, obviously. So we said specifically what we're talking about. No, I'm getting ready to. Okay, that's that's next. Um, so what happened was the Atlantic started doing sponsored content, and they're just dumping it into online. their CMS online. Yes, just dumping it into their content management system. Uh, are we sure about that? Looks like it. Yeah, it, it was a normal like it. page. It has a ban. It had a little a tiny little indicator, header, yeah. um, which I noticed immediately, but most people said was not nearly. No, I did not notice immediately. Striking enough. It, the I, I think it wasn't. You know, as big or bold as it should have been, but I did. I did see it, and I was like, okay. It's the, the mistake isn't that that was – so So they ran a, a sponsored piece about Scientology. So people were upset on two different fronts, right? People were upset because, A, a lot of people really don't like Scientology. I'm not going to get into that. I, I feel like if you, you, you want to believe in space gods that come down and make people sad, that's totally cool. If you want to believe in your stupid religion, no, 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 says no. Will Smith. I feel that whoa, about many whoa. different I, – I have strong feelings about this that are not part germane to this conversation. So many midichlorians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I don't believe in midichlorians either, Norm. The the other side of it is that, that the Atlantic did a particularly terrible job signposting this. So it had the same header treatment as editorial columns on the Atlantic's website. It had uh, the same – by header treatment, I mean headline, byline, timestamp, like comments, tweet, all that stuff. It had the same comment – uh, structure that their normal po posts do. Use the same fonts, use the same image styles. All of that stuff was designed to look like a piece of editorial content. So if you, A, were insane and didn't look at it and say, oh God, this is a piece of advertorial, or B, didn't see the little thing that said sponsored content. It was highlighted in yellow, so it was pretty bright, um, and then had a link next to it to describe what it is. Then you would have been you, you could have been duped into thinking that hey someone at the Atlantic who it, also is the head of the Church of Scientology is really into Scientology now and it's a good thing. No, no, it, it didn't make me say because I usually didn't see the sponsored post thing, but it didn't make me think wow Scientology is great. All made me think is wow they they're really reaching for terrible stories. Yeah, or it, it reflected poorly on the Atlantic, not positively on Scientology. Either way. It reflected poorly in the Atlantic. Um, so c controversy ensued, as it does. Uh, like I said, it seemed from my from responses to my Twitter feed, it seemed like seventy percent of people really don't like Scientology that responded, and maybe thirty percent were public publishing people who were like, "This is fucking terrible advertorial." I, I mean, I think the biggest backlash I saw was against the comments, which were clearly also planted along with the story. You don't say. At least the initial batch of them, I think. It was. I assume the comments were open, and people quickly. Yeah, once they, they got, saw this post, and it spread on Twitter and everything. Were they curating comments to only have positive? They comments? were removing positive com uh, negative. After a while, they couldn't keep up because once it hit Reddit, then then they they had to just shut the whole thing down. When I clicked on it, it only had nine comments, yeah. and it was like right when people started posting it. So I don't know if they had deleted negative comments or if those were all just fake plants. They deleted negative. I don't. I don't necessarily think they had to be planted. They could have just said, "Hey, here's our mailing list. Go post positive stuff here." And and I mean, whether that's plants or grassroots is. Depends on how you look at things, Gra grassroots. Um, the thing that they did do was uh, uh, they shut the whole thing down pretty quickly. Uh, and they said, whoops, we messed up. We handled this poorly. And, and I mean, in defense of the editorial staff at The Atlantic, I, if they even knew that this was going to happen, which they may not have. I don't, I don't think they did, seeing um, I saw Alexis Madrigal tweet something um, that I believe was pertaining to this, and he responded to somebody on Twitter and said, I don't know anything about it. Let me look into it. Which is a good – I mean, like, there there are three ways to look at this. One, if you're an editor on a, mag, on a publication like this, that, that ignorance is good because you can come out and say, look, I have no idea what the fuck they did, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, two is that they tell you – which seems to be what happened at CBS. They said, hey, you have to do this, and everyone from the, from the president of CBS Interactive down to the editorial staffs protested. Um, and then they had to do it anyway because, you know, at some point it's do this or you're going to be fired. Mm -hmm. um, the sponsored content explanation on The Atlantic does say very explicitly, like, has no involvement with editorial staff. As it should be. Because um, the, the worst case is that they do this regardless of you saying, hey, this is a bad idea. And then you have to you have to figure out what the what the fix is. Do you think sponsored posts should uh, – advertisers should have to say how much they paid for a sponsored post? I don't think that's germane. I mean, I'm okay with not knowing. I, I don't. I don't think anybody cares. Um, 
I mean, I care about of... I care about that as a media, as a guy who who like I'm just curious to see what the Atlantic gets for a sp- sponsored post from Scientology. But not as a reader, I don't think it. I don't think it's germane to readers. Um, oh, as a reader, something formatted like an article is never germane. Either. I don't think it's. I think it's wildly inappropriate to format something as an article and pass it off as sold content. Unless, I mean, there are places that do it pro- uh, correctly, like the the sponsored posts that they do on Boing Boing that lead off with "This is a sponsored post. It has a different color background than the rest of the blog." Like that, I, I don't have a massive problem with that. I I still find it a little bit distasteful. But and and you know, the same thing goes on the other side with with user generated content when you have something like. On the BuzzFeed's network, and everything is generated by users. Yeah, and you have no it's zero differentiation between what's editorially driven and what's user driven. I think everything is approved. Well, it's at curated. Least. It's curated, but you know. It, Should we talk about the BuzzFeed thing? Because there was a, there's a little bit of a, a brouhaha with BuzzFeed and Reddit going right now. What's going on there? There are a couple things I'm curious about on this. If we on the Atlantic? stay on it for a couple okay, minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, did either of you guys see what the post looked like? linked from the home page or whatever page no. it was on. My hunch reference. would be that it was lo- uh, linked from an ad. Usually you link that from an ad unit. Because I'm so. curious if it was presented, you know, like a story as well on the on the home page. I think people would have flipped out much more if it had been in like the main blog feed or whatever for the Atlantic. Probably. And the other thing I was just thinking about the for formatting of this stuff, how do you think standards have changed for this over the past 50 years or so? Because if you look at back at magazine ads, from like the 50s, 60s, probably 70s, it like everything was super text heavy and like ads were mm-hmm. all narrative based and it was basically like magazine copy written really creatively. By Don Draper. Yeah, exactly, to promote a product and then there would be like one image or something kind of a, as a, a lead off. To realize people don't want to read. Sure, but does that, has like the, has that changed the acceptability of long form like a- advertising stuff. I don't think so. I think long form ad content, like Apple, has done that in you know the past two decades and has had success. And you can have buy you know big full page ads in newspapers. That's basically copy. Because I mean, if you, if you think about you guys let off the conversation talking about you know sponsored stuff in magazines. Yeah. And those, like I don't read too many magazines these days, but I can't really imagine those looking more. Uh, fitting in better with the magazine than ads of 50 years ago did because they were, you know, very close yeah. to looking yeah. like a standard. Yeah, and you're right. Page. I think a campaign would probably have be more effective if it went for the old the old 50s, 60s ad look and called, you know, ca- called that part of the brain. Then, you know, it was intentionally retro. And then something that tried to look like it was on, you know, the part of the magazine and on the page before. Here, here's the th- my my problem with with this kind of advertorial is has traditionally been that if your goal is to fool a reader into thinking they're reading, like if the only way this ad succeeds is if you fool your reader into thinking that they're reading something that was written by the editorial staff, then that says something horrible about both what the advertiser and the publication think about your your their readers. Like I think that the readers at the Atlantic are uh, part of the reason there's been an outcry for this, and, and it doesn't happen in a lot of other magazines. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to name specifics because I don't know specific cases, but I know that for a long time, like, like the kind of lower end women's magazines um, did a lot of advertorial that was really specifically designed to look like ad- editorial content in the magazine, and it worked because that market didn't give a shit. When you're talking about a magazine like the Atlantic, where it's a ed- highly educated. Um, uh, intelligent audience, they're going to revolt. And if you think you can fool your audience, then and and then then and then you can't. Then you have fucked up really bad. Um, and, and I think, I mean, if I were a reader of a publication that did that regularly, I would not read that publication anymore. So maybe the difference is, fifty years ago, that type of advertising was just so commonplace, so standard that everybody knew. That it was there was a distinction between well, editorial but, and advertising, but it wasn't designed to look like. I don't think that ads. If you're talking about like the ads in the back of Boy's Life, I don't think that those were designed to trick the reader into thinking they were editorial, like they were written by the magazine, part of the magazine. They're clearly yeah. ads. Um, I, I, I mean, I think that. Well, first off, advertising has changed dramatically in the last fifty years, right? It's sure. gone from promise-based ads that say, "Hey, this is going to make you, this is going to make your hair stop falling out," to, "Hey, this is going to make you," to brand-type advertising that says, "Hey, drinking Coke makes you cooler," or this More Toyota like this is in this picture. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so it's gone from a straight out claim that I think a lot of that stopped because of truth and advertising rules in the 60s and 70s to um, 
and I could be completely off base here because I I took these these classes twenty five years ago now, so it's 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 not fresh. Um, to to the the more promise based brand brand based advertising that that encourages you, hey, buy our product; it makes you cool. And that that is much. And the advertorial is the polar opposite of that. It's instead of being, hey, buy this product; it makes you cool. It is. Hey, this thing does a specific thing, so it is a throwback to your '50s style advertising. I think it's just it's just really disingenuous to try to fool your audience into thinking, "Hey, so we what's, approve of this." What's the deal with BuzzFeed and? and oh, oh, so anyway, the Atlantic apologized. That's the oh yeah, so they, they yeah. took so the they said, down. Hey, it was a, just a real apology. It wasn't a, a half-assed. You know, they literally we said to, we messed up. Yeah, they, they start off with we, we messed up. It wasn't a we need to make money deal with it. Kind of yeah. Thing. No, it was, and they pulled the ad. They stopped doing the campaign. They're going to reevaluate and come back with a better way to you do think it. They gave the money back. I am sure they had to. Yeah, or at least did it make good. You know, Scientology is the big winner in all this. I mean, the other, the other, the other way to say this is if the ad rep said, "Hey, this is going to be a terrible debacle. Are you sure you want to do it?" Then good luck getting your money back from the from those guys. I I don't know. Um, the BuzzFeed's. Uh, I I don't know the specifics of the BuzzFeed Reddit thing, uh, but I think it has to do with image attribution. So BuzzFeed does a lot of these lists that are like the fifty cutest puppies. And- yeah. Or, or the the best dogs penguins. dogs fighting birds or you know whatever um and most of those a, a significant number wow. of those images come from reddit and List. they're rarely attributed less no they were attributed as reddit or rather than to the specific user sure. and if you can even find out which user originally submitted the image <laughs> good luck exactly good luck yeah um so reddit was pissed off about something and buzzfeed is like you know once it hits reddit it's fair game and i you know I don't know where I, I don't have strong feelings about this either way, but it's kind of on topic with the other stuff we've talked about so it's far today. So. Dumbing down of the internet. What you don't like lists? Just consolidate everything. What are the fifty-five worst songs to die to? Think about uh, that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday is number one, according to BuzzFeed. Number two was Tomorrow from Annie, which is just a bad song to listen to anytime. Yeah, I would really be pissed if I died to that song. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, that's not, (laughs) (laughs) as you're doing the Groundhog Day off into the gravel quarry, tomorrow comes on the radio. Do you slam on the brakes or do you try to jump out the car before the, the, before it goes over the cliff? I don't think, oh, I think, I thought you were saying you're already over the cliff. No, no, you're, you're like, you're, it's almost too late. You're on the Thelma Louise path. I think you just start cursing. God damn it. Maybe tomorrow will be better. All right. um, uh, let's do a quick Reddit check-in because Arnold Schwarzenegger is doing an ammo right now. Oh, my God. What's the best thing Arnold Schwarzenegger has said so far? Someone asked Arnold Schwarzenegger on Reddit, Arnold, are you making Twins 2? And he says, yes, yes we will make Twins 2 with Danny DeVito and, and Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. Wait, what? It's called Triplets. It, it had been announced before, I think, but somebody was <gasps> checking in saying, is that still, still totally on track? And thing. he says, hell yeah. That's a great idea. Can... Danny DeVito has literally, he has gotten so much better. Like, he was always awesome. He is, he gets better every year. I think he just found a way to play his character from Taxi again. Not but always sunny. But, Taxi was super, grosser. was really, like, had, had nuanced sadness. And, I mean, he was crass, but he... There was depth to that character. Well, also, he, like... In Always Sunny, he's just a bad person. Sure, he just gets to play the... <laughs> I mean, most sitcoms have a tendency to, as they go on, just uh, embellish the most ridiculous aspects yeah. of every character and yeah. play those up. Like, Joey from Friends got stupider every year. Yeah, Ross got whinier every year. The, the characters in It's Always Sunny just get... They, they start off as really mean narcissists Awful. at the beginning and just become... <laughs> The absolute craziest, most <laughs> self-obsessed, pathetic people ever, and it's funny. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. And I think, yeah, Danny DeVito just found the way to play that that like creepy troll character t- t- as extreme as he could. So has Danny DeVito always been this crass, and it, he just had to wait for the world to catch up, or has he gotten crasser as he's gotten older? Have you I seen Throw Mama crasser. from the cra- Throw yeah. Mama from the Train? No. I mean, he's pretty weird in that. It's weird, but it's not crass. It's not. But it's just he's, bizarre. But he's still playing like the the little weirdo guy. I mean, him is he took a gift and turned it into a career. Him as Penguin, like that was Oswald. Cullen that was Bob. when the writing was on the wall, right? Like that was Danny DeVito. Yeah, but, but from then on, there were some real physical deformities there. In addition to being very short, like if having flippers is gonna fuck you up, man. Yeah, but he still bites the dude's nose off. 
Well, I mean, and that was pre Tyson biting Hollyfield's ear off. So that was like that was early cannibalism. You don't see film. a lot of noses being bitten off in movies. <laughs> well, not outside of the zombie, uh, you know, the zombie genre. Um, Microsoft Research rolled out this interesting thing uh, yesterday, the day before, or a week ago for you guys. I don't know when the hell it was. Uh, called the Illuma Room. Did you see the video for nope. this? Tell me about the I sent you room. a link to this. Yeah, it tell, was me, a, tell me about the living room. So this the video shows a guy sitting on a couch with an Xbox controller, and he says, Xbox, go big. It's an unfortunate choice of words. But what happens is the Kinect then maps the room. So it, it, it takes note of where all the things are positioned in the room. And then a projector comes on, and it shows... Uh, information that would be outside the screen projected on the room in a way that's con perspective correct for like the plants and shelves and all the stuff that's in the room. It's a project so, out of Microsoft Research. Okay. So, for example, when he was playing Halo, or a first-person shooter that looked awfully like, a lot like Halo, uh, the room showed like kind of like a – it was almost like a Photoshop. You know when you do like an edge, find edges, Photoshop filter, mm -hmm. and you kind of get that just the just the bare outline of buildings and, and stuff in a photo? It showed that projected on the room around the TV. So instead of the TV, even though it was already a big 60-inch TV in the room, it made what he was looking at much, 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 much bigger. It was a really cool demo. Sounds like a cool demo. Doesn't – I cannot – Imagine how this will be used day to day. You'd have to have it. You'd have to have a a spectacularly dark room for it to work in the real world, because you know normal rooms aren't aren't particularly reflective enough to to do projection on that looks good. But it was more. It wasn't. It, it the thing that was interesting to me that spoke to me about the video was it seemed to. Um, it seemed to reflect the way your eye works. So if you think about the way your eye works, the corneal density, the, the density of rods and cones in your cornea is very strong in the middle, mm -hmm. where we have the best vision. Focus. And then it 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 uh, it as you get further from the fovea, is that right? It gets more and more diffuse the rods and the cones. So you you have. You look at the center thing, which in this case would be the TV, and then the rest of it is just filling in some more information for your peripheral vision. Information about? Uh, so where people are shooting from. So when somebody shot from off the screen, you'd see the line come in for the tracer, and then it would come across the screen and hit you, but you would have much better information about where it was from looking at the video. Okay. Um, That's cool. Now, if they can actually do this in the real world, it's a whole different thing. I, I thought this was pretty cool. I, this is something I would if, – if you could do this with an Xbox or perhaps the next Xbox, I would sign up for that. All that I can think about is how much gamers are going to bitch about this new dividing line between core games and, you know, immersive games or whatever they're, they're going to call them. And, Illuma Room, right, I think, is like, the name. And, and how many Halos and Gears of Wars are going to support this as a, an extra feature? And they're like, you don't have to use it, but – you know, Microsoft's going to mandate, okay, so many games, you know, for the Xbox. For first-party games, all have it. Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, and maybe this isn't actually going to turn out to be a it, feature of the next Xbox. Who knows? A lot of times, Microsoft research stuff ends up never turning into real products at all. No, what they do is they have a budget and just free reign to do stuff. And then when actual product departments... Uh, need things to make their products cool, they'll just tap in the, oh, we want to use that. Hey, I remember seeing this from a Microsoft research video 10 years ago. Yeah, let's, let's see how that's, far that's come along. Oh, we need a way to demonstrate, uh, you know, our new, sell our new cameras or webcams. Okay, yeah. we'll use, you know, new interactive we, we webcams. We can put mustaches on people, oh. productized. Yeah. Um, Disney announced something this morning. I don't know the details on this because it was happening as we were, like, turning on the podcast. But uh, uh, I don't even know what it's called. Disney Infinity. Disney Infinity? Infinity. Really? That's what Infinity. they called it? Infinity. Like, as in to infinity. I think Disney owns enough stuff for that to be an appropriate name. Well, if you look at, like, Kingdom Hearts. Well, describe what Disney Infinity is. Yes. So Disney Infinity is basically Activision's Skylanders, but for Disney. Or so think you can buy Disney action figures? So, they're, they're so I can put selling figures. I can put Mickey Mouse on my Portal of Power? From, yeah, from various series. Okay. And then Jack Mickey in. And he's going to load up Mickeyverse, and you're going to be able to play some some kind of video game, you know, in in Mickey World. So it's or like an e-card. Mr. Incredible goes in, and you play in Mr. Incredible, the Incredibles world. So is this a um, is this a PC thing, or is this a Xbox thing? I'm or sure it'll be consoles, multi-platform. I'm sure it'll be you know PS3, Xbox. Hmm. Uh, did they announce like initial characters? 
So they've announced. Um, I'm intrigued. Is, in, and it, it is the same format. It is a, a a collectible figurine that has some sort of RFID or NFC chip in it that you put on a base that connects it to Xbox, PS3, Wii, GameCube. Exactly. Probably not GameCube. Really? Oh, come on. Uh, um, but I assume Wii U probably. They said they're launching with The Incredibles, Monsters University, and Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, but there there will be other launch series. They're just not talking about them yet. So is this going to be one game or a whole shitload of games? Or is it just like an MMO that you can you pl- drop your dudes in and that then Mickey's your pet in your Disney Infinity MMO? So from what I've read, I think it'll be one game. It might okay. vary by you know by platform. It's a somewhat. franchise, yeah. Um, but there will be so like in Skylanders, I haven't I haven't played it, but from what I gather, um, there's kind of one like overarching world and depending on which character you're using you can access different parts of it right you um, can you can level up each skylander but you might need you need to use a certain ability or have a certain just be playing with a certain character to yeah. do certain quests you might have to have a win strength in order to go into a specific temple or something like exactly, that exactly something yeah. like that so this game it sounds like they're breaking it into two parts and one of them is like the in-world stuff. So you can only mess around in the pirate's world as Jack Sparrow. You can't do like a Kingdom Hearts funky crossover. That's um, kind of a bummer. So but, it's kind of like Disney World or Disney Land, except you can only ride certain rides if you're wearing certain costumes. But then it has another you, component <laughs> that is probably, it sounds kind of like minigame stuff. Okay. And those are where you'll do like Mr. Incredible boxes Jack Sparrow. It must, you must be this Jack Sparrow to ride this ride. Right. So that's the that's probably going to be like the campaign adventure component. Mm. And then this other one sounds like it'll either be multiplayer or mini games or or something else. And that's where you'll have all your crossover so the, stuff. The challenge with this stuff is you have to like there's a real temptation, I would think, on the side of the faceless multinational corporation to be super duper evil with this. Because like if you have to be Jack Sparrow to ride the Pirates of the Caribbean part, portion of the game, that means that if you don't have Jack Sparrow or, or Orlando Bloom or whoever, you can't go into that part of the game. You won't be able to finish the game. And those are the rare ones. And those are the, yeah, exactly. Or, or even, it, it doesn't even matter if they're the rare ones. Even if they're five bucks each, you pay 60 bucks for the game, and then you get, it comes with Mickey and it, Donald. It will make a lot of money. Well, of course. It yes. will make a ton of money. It sounds like it also has some element of like custom game building in it, so you can potentially create the your user own. User-created stuff? Yeah. So who's developing this? Is it all hands on at Disney, or it is, is it Avalanche Software who, is making the game? Who did? Uh, and they are owned by Disney. Okay. They they've made quite a few like licensed games. Um, apparently, they did the Toy Story three game, which was Re- well was, received for a decent. Toy Story three game. Yeah. yeah. So right. yeah. Okay. It sounds like it'll be a, you know fun for kids. There you go. Potentially sell a few million figures. Uh, uh, last thing on our news front this week, Wes. Last week you wrote a story, maybe a week before last at this point, but I don't think we've talked about it yet. Now, one of the things that was a certainty when I was a, a child and going through school is that below a certain temperature, zero degrees Kelvin, there was no colder temperature. That's why it's absolute zero. Yeah, absolute zero. Absolutely Negative the lowest. 273 Celsius or 373 something. Very, very cold. Colder than liquid nitrogen, colder than liquid helium. It's absolute. Absolute zero. Now, shit's changed. It's no longer absolute. Exactly. But it's a little confusing. Can we, can we talk about this some? I'll try to remember it. I know. With I'm all sp- the CES. Springing this on you after you've brain. been p- pummeled by idiocracy for a week. Um, now, the way people get things close to absolute zero now is with lasers, cooling lasers, right? And it has something to do with arranging the atoms in a specific lattice and limiting their movement and stuff like that using exactly. the lasers, Exactly. So right? when things are not moving, yeah, that's they're zero cold. Zero. Right. So heat is movement. And these these researchers, these scientists, basically created a really complex, I guess, laser array to hold these molecules. Um, I believe in ex- like an extremely rigid formation, but then also control how close they were to one another. Okay. And basically, the way they described it, um, they kind of had a temperature roll around effect, um, where the way we describe temperature. It, these molecules are infinitely hot. Okay. 
Uh, so, uh, so does this mean when you flip to the other side, it's like all of a sudden the mustaches are wearing mu- the the molecules are wearing mustaches and are like evil versions of themselves, and they radiate cold like cold transfers instead of heat transferring, or is it is it literally just like when you get things moving at, at n- not at all unexpected things happen and and it's it's weird and bizarre. I unfortunately I don't remember it well enough to explain it very well. Um, I put a question it, mark it, next to it. It sounds. It seems more to me like the best uh, example I can give is um, like liquid nitrogen being extremely cold, but mm-hmm. you know it, it feels like a, a burn when you are exposed okay. to it. Um, it is like that, but super fucking but, complex. But, uh, but with a lot of math. Okay, fair enough. We we will go no further. Um, I guess that's it for news. Unless anything else has happened, I, I, let's check hey, in with Arnold. Sex, uh, oh yeah, check in with Arnold. Check in with Arnold. Uh, so someone asked Arnold what his favorite movie wait, wait, line. Is he actually responding with writing out his answers? Some of them he is writing on his iPad. He's writing like, like with finger, finger drawing or with the with a, a pen. stylus. You don't know. He's Brown writing it out style. on his iPad and uploading images. For some of them, yeah, he's really he's doing like half awesome. and half. That is crazy. Uh, so someone says, if you had to pick your favorite line from any movie, what would it be? And Arnold says, from someone else's movie, do you do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? It's pretty good. And he says, from my movies, I'll be back. The obvious choice. But from his new movie, The Stand, (laughs) The Last Stand, his favorite line is, you fucked up my day off. (laughs) Wow, that is is the perfect, hey, I want to peddle my new movie, yet still not seem like a total sellout whore. Um, That's great. Good good for Arnold. Um, Good for Arnold. Hey, you know Zack Snyder's going to make a Star Wars movie? Nope. Nope. Then why is why is uh, Vulture doubling down? Wes, tell me the story. Vulture doubled down. What? What? Hold on. Vulture so, said. So yesterday, Vulture put up a blog uh, news that said. Isn't Vulture the site that accidentally told everybody where John McAfee was so that he could get arrested? No, that was um, Vice. Vice. Okay. Also a V site. Um. So I don't know exactly how much Hollywood insider cred Vulture has. Uh, I don't read Vulture. Um, I don't really read Hollywood stuff, but anyway, they put up a post that Good says policy, Wes. Uh, Zack Snyder is developing an offshoot Star Wars movie, which is not in itself far fetched because so they've hired um, is it Michael Arndt is he is that the name the of the, yep. so he's writing yeah. Episode Seven, but they've also hired Lawrence Kasdan and someone else, Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote or co-wrote, uh, co-wrote Empire. Empire Strikes yeah. Back. Uh, clearly the best Star Wars film. Unquestionably. So he and someone else are also working on a Star Wars movie that is said to probably not be one of the episodes. They're just writing some Star Wars thing. The fact thing. that they were going to even do that would be boggling, but right. believable. So it's potentially going to be a spinoff, um, which seems Stand in alone. line. Sure. In line for I would Disney. watch a Mandalorian... I would watch a Boba Fett Adventures movie. Yes, yeah, so Vulture says... That Zack Snyder is developing a Star Wars spinoff, not a new part of the new trilogy, that features a group of seven Jedi, probably kicking lots of slow mo ass on some planet, and it's based on and Akira seven, Kurosawa's Seven, seven Samurai. Samurai. Which so, is, which so, is which is when really I funny because Hidden oh, Fortress. No. Yep. Well, no, no, but Star Wars: New Hope is based on Hidden Fortress. Sure. sure. The seven Samurai also influence Star Wars. Well. I, Clearly, George Lucas had watched a lot of Kurosawa movies before he wrote Star if Wars. If someone said to me, they're going to make a space Seven Samurai, Star Wars Seven Samurai, I would have said, fuck yeah. But they said Zack Snyder is making Star Wars Seven now, Samurai. Hold on. Let's wait till Man of Steel comes out. But yes. I like Watchmen a lot. Watchmen is a fine mm-hmm. adaptation of... I disagree. A, we, we can discuss this another time. The it's point is, out Zack, Zack Snyder's there. rep said that this is not true. And Vulture has now doubled down, saying that they take the accuracy of its reports very seriously. And while Peace published in The Hollywood Reporter this evening quotes Snyder's rep saying that the director is not involved in any way with New Star Wars, Vulture stands by its story. Hmm. There it go. I, I... I, I think uh, I, I totally believe that they, they want to do... Uh, Disney wants to do many uh, other Star Wars movies that are not... Episode. They're going to Marvel Universe this shit. It's, and I think, that's uh, yes. a, I think that's a good idea because even... Ant-Man meets the Ewoks. Even if the new trilogy doesn't have a heavy emphasis on Luke, you know, Han Solo, all that Snow stuff. Snow White and the Seven Jawas. Just doing, not even, saying that it's not 
like a part of a trilogy is saying this is a Star Wars movie and exploring Cinder on well, the You would want that to be not the episodes. Episode 789 should follow the journey of the Skywalker family. I think they probably extent. I think they probably have to just for like well, hold fan, on. for fan reasons. Or I guess. it could be the continuing story of R2D2 and C3PO. Let's be real. True. Star Wars to date has been the story of R2D2 and C3PO. The Anakin Skywalker nonsense is just, you know. Well, it's supposed to be loose side story. story. If if you take the machete order, I I think that that is I think they will do you know something Skywalker with the new movies just because that is so integral to Star Wars. But obviously there's plenty of universe out there, plenty of fiction, and whether or not it's you know an adaptation of something written or just or just something that kind of builds on all of the the writing and movies and, you know, comics and all that kind of stuff that has kind of built the texture of that universe. Like you can make some really awesome movies, not linked to all the, the Skywalker stuff. Oh yeah. And what that would mean is that they don't have to shoehorn things in that story. In those, Hey, look, it's Boba Fett. It's Chewbacca. They can have that stuff explored elsewhere. Yeah. And I mean like making a movie just about some, a group of Jedi, you know, unattached to galactic importance, just like, on a quest or something that could be really awesome a star wars movie with no force stuff in it whatsoever kind of like the new star wars 1313 game yeah hopefully that comes out you know it could get canned because of the the disney buyout um but supposedly that game is totally like no force stuff dark forces was great and there was no force stuff in dark forces so i mean there's totally potential there for some really awesome spin-off stuff if they have good writers and not Zack Snyder. If you haven't played Dark Forces, don't go buy it because it doesn't hold up. But it was awesome back in the day. I, you say what you will about Zack Snyder. He hasn't been afraid to take take on stuff that is going to make him absolutely loathed by the hardcore fan community. And and I'm kind of exaggerating, too. I don't completely hate him. I think Sucker Punch is maybe the most offensive movie I've ever seen. It's really, really bad. Um, like, don't watch it. It's so bad. It doesn't even roll over to be funny. It's so bad. It's just awful. It. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, I don't really like Watchmen. I do enjoy 300, and I liked Dawn of the Dead okay. Dawn of the Dead was I thought, good. Um, and so, yeah, I think he could potentially make a good Star Wars movie. It just, the the idea of Zack Snyder adapting Kurosawa just, I can't really wrap my mind around that. The thing is, Zack Snyder's kind of up and down. So if Man, Man of Steel really sucks, the next thing will probably be pretty good. So, you know, we got that going for it, us. It's just like the ultimate pop culture junkie adapting like classic art are you saying he's this this decades mcg no 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 was mcg worse mcg is much worse okay much just making sure and, uh, and this, the, this culture this decades pop culture junkie adapting movies is quentin tarantino to be fair probably i would be totally fine with quentin tarantino adapting kurosawa i would i would be totally fine with quentin tarantino adapting kurosawa into a star wars offshoot i don't think i don't know about that I think that would be if it was like a, a hard R Star Wars movie. If on the bright side, if Zack Snyder does do a Star Wars movie, it'll look gorgeous. Tales Cause, of Mace because that is his thing, right? Like yeah. even his the dumb owl movie probably had really awesome <laughs> CG. The <laughs> owls. Did of, you watch the owl movie? The owls of Ghoul. <laughs> did you watch the owl? I movie? did not. Okay, <laughs> I don't. Let's not call it the dumb owl movie until it's. So th- we've all seen the I think owl we movie. We can reasonably guess that it's I a dumb know, owl movie. Some people I'm gonna really come over to your all's place this weekend. We'll watch the owl movie. So it, it was a, it really was a kids movie, so like I'm sure it was you know good for its intended audience. And the trailers for it, like the CG, looked really good. Yeah. And Man of Steel looks good, like visually, like the that the, trailer looks awesome. Yeah, the scene where he's flying, especially in the atmosphere, looks looks really great. And it, it delving into questions of his youth and you know. 300 maybe had too yeah. many like airbrushed abs, but still had a really strong visual identity. A lot of slow motion heads getting chopped off there. So if he does a Star Wars movie, it'll look really cool. Well, the thing that he did with Watchmen and, and 300 was he he took keyframes from the graphic novel and made you, he did those super slow mos to give you, oh hey, it's the comedian getting blown out of the window in the opening scenes of the you know like that stuff was. Anyway, uh, let's play some music and then we'll talk about uh, well CES. I missed the button. Norman Chan and Wes Fenlon, uh, you spent last week at, at the Consumer Electronics Show. Did. Uh, did you enjoy yourself? 
it, tremendously. Did you eat uh, Lotus of Siam? Twice. Twice. <sighs> did you do the buffet Twice. or did you have no. the menu? No, no, no. The buffet was so bad. We did looked you? at the buffet. We did, we, we did a, a walk around the buff- very small buffet table. Eyed the curries and then said no. So the buffet, they cha- the thing about the buffet is you've got to go back a couple of times because it rotates in and out a lot. I, I, going back a couple of times is risky just because you might be stranded as we were. Oh, you, you Uber away from there now. No Uber in Las Vegas. Oh, then you then you uh, you yeah, you arrange cab. your cab. Call cab. Takes They'll call a cab. Forty five minutes. Okay, well there you go. We walked. Um, it was worth it. It was worth it. The you buy you walked away from there. That's we walked scary. and walked back. We walked back in. We walked thirty minutes away and then we walked thirty minutes back. Wow. And then the and then you're Lotus exaggerating. Was, was it was closed. not thirty minutes. That was like 20, 20 minutes. And so, then Little Sam Clo was closed and the owner or one of the guys who worked there had to give us a ride. Wow, really? He did not have to. He did not he have to. He extremely graciously he gave us a ride. ride and dropped us off on the strip. We're going to send him some By test. the Circus Circus. And actually, while, well, we had nice. some nightmares. while we were waiting outside, um, I saw a guy uh, like in a truck pick up a couple other people from outside the yeah. restaurant and drive mm-hmm. them. And I thought, that's weird. That taxi doesn't have any markings or anything yeah. on it. I think that guy worked at the restaurant, too, and gave some other people yeah. a lift because no taxis were out there. Like they are very aware of their place in the world as it pertains to taxis and how scary it is there. Because for dinner, they have they have relationships with some cab companies that will always send somebody over. But at lunchtime, sometimes it's a little hard to get out. It's, it's a tough, tough place um, to be. So I, not only do they make the best Thai food in the country, they're yeah. really nice. They're, fin- they're phenomenally nice. When you, order, when you skipped the buffet at lunch did they look at you like really you're skipping the buffet that's crazy see when we went and we skipped the buffet at lunchtime once they gave us the really why would you skip the buffet the buffet is fabulous but i I, maybe the buffet is going away is transitioning away um what'd you have what was the best thing you ate everything short rib penang short rib penang is good do you have the duck duck, uh not the duck penang crispy duck with mint Ooh. Garlic prawns. Is it crispy all the way or just crispy the skin? garlic prawns. Uh, mm. The duck is crispy on the skin and mm. very tender. Okay. Um, stuffed chicken wings. Stuffed chicken wings. Oh, like the angel wings with all the... Oh. Some hot soup. A little fiery. Mm. That was probably my least Like Tom Yum Guy or one of, of those? Or? Uh, we got some uh, egg noodles. We got some what pets was, ew. What was the, the noodle, the really hot noodle we got the second time? Um, that was the North yeah. second time Thai dish. Fuckers. Yeah. It was something soy. Something. It was delicious. That was really good. Um, okay. It was all good. Do you, I can't believe you went to the Circus Circus. Uh, you know, that's where I stayed the first time I went to Vegas for Comdex with ours years and years ago. I'm sorry. Our first it, year. It, we didn't go inside. We waited outside of the Circus oh, Circus. You, you didn't, you know, you, taxi you got to go inside to the no, Circus no, no, Circus. No, 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 no. I, I don't want to go. I don't think there are any clowns inside. Yeah, but there are. The, really? It's fucking terrifying. Uh, it, is, it is a litany Why of would nightmares. You have Clowns walking around the casino. So you remember the remember the the oh, um, the God. Ridley Scott Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas where they go to the Circus Circus and he, they're fucked up on ether. Ridley Scott made no Terry Gilliam. Terry Gilliam, sorry. Uh, uh, they go into the they go into the Circus Circus. They're fucked up on ether and they're they're hallucinating and having a bad time. That's what I don't want. That's pretty much what it's like. Like there's no there wasn't a whole like the colors were maybe brighter. But the actual hotel is terrifying. There's a trapeze act going like 24 hours a day. There's clowns. There's there's sometimes animals in there for no apparent reason. It is um, – and, and the terrible thing about the, the Circus Circus sacrifice. is behind the, the Circus Circus, there's more rooms. Like the hotel, there's, there's a whole set of like cinder block buildings that are essentially like exterior door motels behind it that smell like water and smoke damage pretty much all the time. That's where I stayed. It was the first trip to Vegas. I think for, Fear and Loathing ours. is the only movie that's ever made me nauseous. I love Fear and Loathing. It's such and, a good movie. Yeah, you know, I just I didn't really like it partially because it kind of made me sick. Um, I can see that. I think that was mostly it, actually, and yeah. just it was so weird to me trying to mesh it with the book in uh, my mind, like Johnny Depp's. I mean, Johnny Depp's depiction of Hunter S. Thompson is probably really great, um, accurate, but it's not. Like the way he is written in the, it's not the way you. you it's not the, the way inter- I read him. It's how in the you. Book. It's how you yeah. would picture him, not how you read read the character as it's written. But just thinking about that movie and thinking about that being a real place is horrifying. Yeah, it's real scary in there. You should. Everybody should say the circus circus once. It's good. Builds character. They have a great prime rib buffet. You can. You know, in Vegas now, you can have a buffet of buffets. Wait, what? You can pay $99, and you can go to up to, I believe, six buffets in the span of 24 hours. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible idea. They call it 24 hours. I could 
Do three. Depend. Okay, if you were, you'd to, have to. There'd be what, some what time massive would you dumpers start? in there. What what time would you start? Uh, I think I think that's one. Uh, you know, we have some experience with twenty four hours. Okay. I think that that is a uh, pick up first thing in the morning. I think you get up early. Uh, nope. For nope. a breakfast buffet. Do nope. The, the I think buffets, you do late dinner. Do all the buffets have a breakfast and dinner version? I think they do. Not all. Some. some, of them some, are some I'm sure breakfast. some of these would. I think you start with a late dinner. A yeah. late dinner the first night. So you gorge the late dinner. Are you thinking you, you stay straight. awake? No, 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 no. Then you go to bed and wake up early, and then you do four buffets the next day. Oh, see, I think you, I think you go breakfast. all night. I think you ro- ro- roll hard, hard into this. You go to the all-night buffet buffets at like closed. 3 o'clock buffets in the morning. Closes. There's a small night buffet. So I don't you know, know where to go. I, I, I would argue that the buffet is just generally to be avoided. I think the buffet is always a mistake. Great, I think Joey might agree with you. Yeah. Joey's shaking his head, nodding his head over now, there. That would be a great, great buffet experience. It was a lot of fun. We... Meaning you, Great. Norm, Me Braga, and, and everybody but Joey. Yeah. Um, okay. Custom order mac and cheese. But you can get custom food at buffets in Vegas now? There was a guy. I think it was the so only cheesy. the only custom thing. At, Holy at crap, the so we cheesy. To. There's just a guy standing there with little pans with pasta in them. And I want that it says, now. you want mac and cheese? It's like the cook to order <laughs> prime rib. You want some mac and cheese? And I was like, yes, please. You want the juice? And I then got, we, I got we that walk, was after like we walk over to the six other six plates of food. The other little part of the the display that has like three or four types of cheeses in it and bacon and some other they're like three or four other types of meat. And I was like, what's that? One? And he's like, it's prime rib. And in my head, I was like, do I want prime rib? Yeah, prime rib. Was I did there? not. Oh, that what? was that would have been too far. No, but I did get all three types of cheese and bacon. So, so when I was watching you, Gene and I were sitting at home watching TV or something, watching you guys go to the buffet on Twitter and, and Instagram. And she said, "Oh God, I think they're at the Wicked Spoon." We, we were at the Wicked Affirmative. Spoon. Affirmative. <laughs> yeah, and then and then like pictures of the plates of food came across, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Wow, that is a that is that is mm-hmm. ambitious." And then about, what, maybe 20 minutes later? More plates. More plates. More plates. It just kept coming. I made a really bad realization in Vegas. Yes. Um, I I kind of hate the the excess of things like CES and Vegas. Uh, But I realized during this buffet that, you know, you you pay a fair amount to eat at. It's an expensive buffet. Yeah. And we realized, I realized that. I could get a whole plate full of 10 different things and take like two bites of all of them and just throw the rest of it away. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a trick to a buffet, especially that type of lavish and extravagant buffet, is you got to go s- sample everything because you can't gorge on what you see first. If you see a really good little shrimp plate with no- with um, with noodles or something and it looks great, well, no, no, they're going to fill up on that, but then all the great stuff is down the aisle. See, there are two approaches to the buffet. One is to sample a shitload of you different kinds of food. sample everything and then double down on things you like. No, no, the other way to oh, approach the buffet is to get your value out of it. Like, this is the dangerous... Like, th- that's an okay way to buffet. We all got our no, no, value no. We, you, you sample first as the first pass. No, no, no. And You're, then you, you get, get the value let me explain in the, the theory second, here. third, fourth, and fifth passes. The theory is that you go exclusively for high-dollar items. So you're going for the shrimp and the lobster and the prime rib and, and you know... The yep. things that have yep. massive cost or time involvement. Yep. And you exclusively gorge on those until you, can, you get your you $75 worth. You gorge on that... After you sample everything, and that's the benefit of sampling everything. I just don't like gorging. I'm not. I'm not equipped for it anymore. I think we all sampled and gorged. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So okay. So food questions. That was, that was uh, the best. Best. Best thing about CES. Uh, what, what else happened at CES? Do we want to check in with Arnold? Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. I'd love to see what Arnold. Arnold's doing. Someone asks Arnold. Arnold, is it a tumor? And Arnold says. It's not a tumor. <laughs> Exclamation mark. Good news. Signed, he signs all his... He signs it. Does it's he not sign a tumor. Ar- former signed, governor of California, Arnold. Arnold. Nice. Wow, on his iPad. In pretty good cursive. That's good. You think, uh, are you going to give it a stylus? For, for an iPad. Come yeah. on. For an iPad. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. So CES. Did anything... Is there anything... I talked about CES last week on the podcast. If it, I hope yeah. people didn't hate that too much. Um, Talked is a way to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody asked what was in between the jump cuts, right? Because I just cut, I cut all the dead space out of out of a twenty five minute video. It gave okay, it some real energy. Minutes. It was it was real fast. I, like I went back and watched it later. I was like, man, I don't think I can actually like. I seem really fucking angry here. 
I wasn't really that angry. I was just a little upset. Wow, Arnold, the original Arnold Schwarzenegger drawing of Reddit, the Reddit alien. We interrupt this description of last week's podcast to tell you guys that Arnold drew the Reddit alien. And he said, thanks, Reddit. I had a fabulous time. Oh, is this the end? Cursived, and he drew the Reddit alien and cited Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> That's amazing. Turn it around. I would see. Oh, my God. Hey, hey, wow. We did it. That's a pretty good representation. It's pretty damn good. Yeah, it's not shabby. Wow. I wonder what app he's using to draw on the iPad. I've got some more saved up, so we can okay, come back. Okay, okay, we can come back. Good. Very good. Um, That's the best. Okay, so best thing you saw at the show, besides the buffet and Lotus of Siam Oculus Rift. and Secret Pizza, which we've talked about many, it like many before, times, we won't every, go back to again. Um, Oculus Rift. Oculus Rift. I saw this at PAX last year. I wasn't. I. I you can't wear your glasses under the under I can the goggles. Wear, yeah, I can. Mine, mine are too Bra- thick and both wide. Braga and I maybe they changed wore, the design some. Yes. Because it seemed like my eyelashes were hitting the lenses when I was testing it at, at PAX. Um, I, I, we've talked about this at length. I'm not going to get into I don't think we need to get into it anymore. It's, it seems really good, though. Were they showing any actual games, or was it still just Doom 3 BFG? Uh, they were showing un, uh, the Unreal Citadel demo and uh, Deathmatch in Unreal with bots. Okay. So, so And frame rate seemed good. You have to be locked at 60. But I mean, no, like the motion tracking wasn't laggy. Were they using the new sensor for this? They're or was using this... the new sensor, but okay. not the new LCD. Okay. Um, anything? Anything that you haven't? I mean, there's a 20 minute video on the site that it's, that like you, you literally got into watch, really a terrifying level of detail. And we should watch if they're interested in this at all. Oculus um, Rift. I would say the second thing that I was most interested in at CES was probably Nvidia Shield. As really, the thing that I was most interested in. Do you think that's a real product? Oh, I mean, yeah, I know they're saying product. it's coming out no, no. in absolutely. You too. Are they going to sell them? Yeah. Like, are people going them. to buy them? I guess buy is the real question. Uh, uh, that is a bigger question. So, are you? About, a- that is more a uh, a function of price. Okay. So, it, just to explain what the Shield is, in case you don't know, it is a Android kind of clamshelly looking device. It's a- a- Android clamshell handhold. Um, it has a phone size slightly bigger than phone size screen, maybe uh, gamepad controls on the bottom. And you can play Android games on it, but but you can also stream from your PC, your GeForce 600 series or newer equipped PC, uh, PC games. I assume that the games are going to have to Steam. support it, maybe. But no, just on Steam. Just Steam games. So, are you excited about the streaming portion of this or I'm the Android about games the portion, portion of this? Of this. Okay, because the Only Android portion, do, who cares? Yeah, don't really care about the yeah. Android portion. Although, although I do have to say, a surprising number of Android games support game pads. Like, oh no, that's just, most it's of true. the old PC ports. It's true, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't play mobile games all that much. And, and you're not going to play old PC and not ports. the ones with. Uh, not the, I, and when I do, it's touch screen based ones. Yeah, uh, ma- maybe, I mean, it's not like maybe you're going to go back to Max Payne. HDMI to your TV. If you buy stuff from Google Play, I don't think so. Yeah, um, but you can HDMI your PC games to your to your TV. Okay, use that controller. So, so, do they talk about like specifics? Do they talk about resolution and stuff like that? Seven twenty. Did you get to play this at all? Yep. What is it? What's it? What's it's, it's like on live with controller. And it's built into your, you know, to the handheld. Is it well? So saying it's like on live is kind of a negative because I didn't think on live was very good. Is it like is there art compression artifacts you and stuff like that? Definitely see some compression artifacting. Did in, you dislike in the recent game like on live tech or on live experience? I disliked the the slight but perceptible lag between uh, your motion and the and the something happening. And then I also didn't like the fact that there were, you could see compression artifacts. You could definitely see compression artifacts uh, in in some of the dark areas of the screen, and uh, in terms of lag, I could not tell whether it was because the the racing game that they demoed was floaty, or because there what, was what was, the, lag. was it a tech demo or was it a real game? It was, it was uh, Need for Speed. Okay, the the most recent one. Yeah. Uh, what um, what kind of Wi-Fi do you need to do? Is it work over N? N? Through a router. Really? Yep. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, and will it support the, the, AC? The more the uh, I don't know if we'll support AC. Uh, the, the I don't think there was an AC chip in um, yeah, I in bet Tigra not. four. Yeah, in Tigra four. Uh, the most interesting thing is that the the reason this works is because they say that in uh, GeForce Kepler's cards, six hundred series or newer, uh, there is a hardware encoder to encode HD six four while the game is rendering. Uh, I don't see why anyone else couldn't just do that. Have, have build a hardware I mean, encoder. Intel has a hardware MPEG-4 H.264 encoders it, in uh, Sandy Bridge and newer, right? That's why AirPlay works and, on and, Max. And why they couldn't just you adopt that software so you and have that stream over client side to any Android device. Yeah, or or any 
any device with any, the appropriate app. Yeah. Any, I mean, there's any, no reason Valve couldn't do this with iOS yes. is what you're saying. Yep. Except for the control situation. <coughs> um, that's it. Kind of interesting, I guess. I mean, I don't, I like, I, I don't have to pay, I don't want to have to pay $400 to be able to do this. Yeah. I mean, I could buy a $15 cable from, from, uh, from Monoprice and a Xbox controller adapter. The right way to do it is get to, the same thing is to just output HDMI. Yeah. Um, to, but for people who can't do that, if they need to go over Wi-Fi, uh, it, it'd be nice for a different solution, cheaper solution. We should test. I'll, maybe after I'm back from the baby <laughs> break, I'll get some some Wi-Fi, uh, some wireless HDMI plus USB streamers, and we'll test them out. I've been threatening to for a long time, and I just keep forgetting. Because um, that that would solve the same purpose, and I bet it's going to be cheaper than 400 bucks. Probably cheaper. Yeah. Um, uh, anything else on the Shield? Tigra 4 stuff. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's... It's inter- one of the things that's interesting about Android to me is that there's a very clear difference in the in the chipsets. There has to be a difference in the chipsets, but there's absolutely no way for us to test the different chipsets and see which one's better because of the rest of the stuff that goes into an Android phone. Um, so there's no way to get apples to apples comparisons. More more interesting is that out of CES, the big winner in terms of gaming is Valve, and none of these products could exist without big picture mode. And big picture mode taking so long for Valve to actually push out. So you think about three very different categories of products. You have Valve and all of their Steambox yeah. affiliates, all the hardware, which is dedicated PC hardware. So it's not just one Steambox, just to be clear. De- de- uh, Steambox, uh, we don't know yet for sure. It seems like multiple seems like Steambox. like multiple hardware partners yeah. uh, running hard, local hardware, running Steam and Linux-based Steam, piping to your TV. Oh, it's directly. three levels. Stream, well, from what Gabe said in the Verge interview, it's three levels. The streaming solution that's real lightweight and inexpensive, similar to the, the Shield right. thing. Um, a mid-range, dedicated GPU, CPU machine that connects directly to the TV and gives a mid-level performance. And then the high end, I assume, will be things like frag boxes and uh, um, kind of dedicated high end gaming machines with real discrete GPUs as opposed to high end integrated, like in the APU. Uh, so when, we, t- when we talk about the big three gaming things, your know, XI3 slash Steambox style hardware, dedicated PC devices, streaming like Shield, and then also tablets with weird controls like Razer Edge. All of those exist because of Steambox or because yeah. of Big Picture Mode. Or they can exist. Can yeah. exist because of Big Picture Mode. I mean, Razer Edge and NVIDIA Shield with playing Steam could not work without big picture mode. Well, it could, but it's it's much much worse because the touch interface for Steam is it was real bad yeah, before big no, picture no mode. Touch. Yeah. Do you think big picture took so long to come out because they were just getting it right, or if they were they just kind of waiting to put it out until close to having things to actually use with I it? I think I think waiting because getting it right. I think yeah. I mean, if you look at the progress of that beta, it launched in beta form. I, I used it from day one, literally, because I've been playing Steam games in the living room for a long time. Um, it was it was a really solid product with a few kind of weird places where you hit a wall that you couldn't do something in big picture mode from the launch of the beta. Um, after and it has improved to the point that it is literally just another client, another view of the client for Steam at this point. I, I think every once in a while I'll hit something that I can't do. I usually hit the bug report button at that point. It is it is increasingly esoteric weird stuff that you drill way you have to drill way down in the app to find problems with at this point. It's it's a it is. Um, if you compare it to even like OSs and uh, like as a co- as a complex product that launched fully baked, it is high on the list of of it, it is a, on a very short list of things that actually did that in 2012. I, I can't like if you look at Windows 8, it was super jacked at the beginning, and they have driver ecosystem issues, which is what causes that. But but like they did a really nice job launching something that was really solid right out of the gate. I thought. Um. Do, uh, did you, do, do we want to talk about? I, I mean, I talked about TV stuff last week. F- 3D is done. It seems like. Did you see 3D stuff anywhere? Uh, I think some TVs had like no glass 3D. I think most of the big TVs these days are they're still going to be 3D. Yeah. They're, they're just, like passive by default, right? Um, I don't know. Pro- just like Maybe. some people are still making plasma TVs, some people are still going to make active 3D glasses. I think they're okay. just not talking about it that much. Yeah. They, nobody cares. So amazingly, they think smart. TVs are a bigger selling point than 3D. Yeah. Well, so, you know, we talked to Adam yesterday on a show that'll be up in a few weeks. Um, and I, I've actually talked to a couple of readers, too, who actually really like smart TVs, not for the primary TV in the house, 
But for the kids' room and the secondary TVs, the ones in the kitchen. Because you don't want to have to pay another 100 bucks for another Roku box. Well, yeah, and it's one less remote for a room that you don't necessarily want a remote. So, I, I mean, I, we're hard on smart TVs. I don't think that they're good. I, I, I really I don't think that they're good as they are right now. But as, as a – like, I can see the usability for – um, for like, like you said, kids' rooms and kitchens and stuff like that. Um, anything interesting? Samsung showed their their modular thing again. I know, the, like the the upgradable smart TV. Any value? Anything out of that at all? It seems more more to think about it. Less likely it's something that people will actually buy, understand, and and use. It seems like those MHL um, HDMI sticks are probably more more realistic. Like the thing that Roku showed last year. But Samsung is going for a complete architecture change, like all the th- all the thinking guts in that. Oh, for the TV in the TV. Tire. Oh, wow, yeah. that's interesting. Okay, um, do we want to talk about uh, streaming about 4K stuff at all? Uh, in that it looks wonderful, but we all know about the problems of 4K. And 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 probably late 2014 at the earliest, maybe 2015. Well, it, it, there's no realistic late, prices. The way, the way TVs work is that you know products are launched January, come out in. July and kind of go on sale in at, 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 at so right. I think the first time we'll see a TV that a normal person would consider buying that's a 4K set is Black Friday 2014 or 2015. Maybe I would say I would even go 2015. At I that think point. even then, if they're priced okay, there's still not going to be like anything to do yeah. with them. 2015 is is a year for 4K. Yeah. I guess if the scalers are as great as they like to say, then maybe it's Or it's if fine. you're running something like a hopper and you have four tuners, then with a 4K TV, you could have 1080, oh my God. four 1080p streams. And on the same set. On the same set and really have your, your crazy situation. Room. The dream of the future. I don't watch that much TV. Um, and touchscreen. Anything else? Uh, did you guys go to the Qualcomm press conference? No, but you we talked about the- it extensively. On the on the night with uh, Robbie, right? Robbie and Christina. No, that was with uh, that was the event, uh, the Pepcom night event, and we went straight from Sony to Pepcom. Okay, skipping out on Qualcomm. Okay, uh, no, but when did you talk about Qualcomm? Oh, that every, was with... every single night. Okay, <laughs> of of the week. Um, Everyone had something to say. It's online, I think, if you want to watch it. It was real weird. The Verge did a, did a, did a, uh, a mashup, like a, 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 a supercut of the Qualcomm press conference, and it was it's. Is real weird. Capturing the weirdness. Real weird. It's worth watching. Um, anything else for CES? That's all that we have on the no, list. I feel like we CES kinda... 2013. All right, Fitbit. Any personal personal health monitor things that were worth uh, that were interesting? They have a new wristband called the Flex, but um, it doesn't work as a watch. So I'm I'm just gonna wait for Gen two for Nike Fuel Band. Nike Fuel Band Gen one wasn't Bluetooth four, right? No, none of them are Bluetooth four. Only Fitbit Flexes. So Bluetooth uh, the the Bluetooth four thing is a huge, huge game changer in terms of battery life on these. Because I've been using this Fitbit Zip thing for like two, three months now. It runs off of a single watch battery, like a CR1023. Mm-hmm. And it is, it, it's still at like two-thirds charge. So like, I, I really can't overemphasize how important Bluetooth 4 so is that, to making yours, that kind of stuff usable. Yours has Bluetooth 4? Yeah, so it, it's, it, and it's, it's like a little, it fits in your watch pocket. Your, I think it's specifically designed to fit in the watch pocket of your jeans. Isn't that the coin pocket? It's a watch pocket. It's, We've it's, talked about this before. Will's watch pocket. You, you, pocket you used, watch. You used to put your pocket watch there. So yeah, it has a little screen and it's one watch battery that's lasted for ages. We will be doing so, a... We'll do a quick look at that. In-depth review of that later yeah. on. Uh, before the battery, well, I, I was trying to get an idea of what battery life was going to be like, just, but it's it's not cooperating, and I use it every day. Um, Can you imagine hipsters in skinny jeans trying to get their pocket watches out of, of their pocket? It's real problem. I watched the watch Simpsons. Pockets. I I've been watching old Simpsons. I watched uh, new Simpsons. I watched the Simpsons with the Portland people the other day. I don't know. It's worth seeking out. It was really really like really funny. I I had forgotten how much I liked the Simpsons. Um, Homer. Uh, the Voodoo Donuts guy moved in next door to Homer, basically, on the other side from Flanders. Voodoo Donuts was on The Simpsons? It wasn't. They were called Satan Donuts, but it was very clearly Voodoo wow. Donuts. Wow. Yeah. Topical. Yeah, they were dialed into the hipster uh, revolution in Portland. The dream of, of, of the 90s is alive. Um, that'll do it for CES, I guess, then, unless you guys have it. This is the last call. We're never going to talk about CES again. Yeah. Go to the site. Done. Done. Okay. Um should we take some questions and then uh, take out takes call, and lunch? Call the show. Here we go. 
I'm not used to the new mixer yet. I apologize. Emails? Well, but we do the other one. Emails. It's, you know, we don't do emails. We do emails. No, 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 no. Questions. If you have a question for this only test, the email address is podcast at tested.com. Or if you want to send in questions to Still Untitled, send them to that same address, podcast at tested.com, and make the subject line questions for Adam. Uh, here is our first question. Hey guys, this is Austin from New York with a would you rather question for you. But first, a bit of trivia about New York City is that Norman Chan once ate his way through the city using Yelp. Um, so the question is, let's say that you're in a world where somehow you're only allowed to play games from one of the following two groups. A, all platform holder exclusives, or B, all multi-platform releases. You can't play God of War if you choose group B, for example, uh, and vice versa. You could never play Darksiders 2 if you choose group A because that's a multi-platform release. And some rules to clarify here, I'm talking about Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, and then all computing platforms as kind of platform holder. And you don't have to worry about buying hardware because uh, you have a magical box that plays everything. And this is for all of your life, past, present, and future. So if you've got a game that started out as an exclusive but then eventually goes multi-platform, that shifts groups. Thanks, and always be testing. Platform exclusives only. Done. So nothing but Mario for you? I would No, nothing but Mario, games. Halo, StarCraft. Diablo. What if StarCraft comes Starcraft out on the 3DS? Starcraft was on the N64. Yeah. Not, not the same. Not the same StarCraft. StarCraft 3 or StarCraft 2 wasn't. Hmm. What That's if StarCraft true. comes out for... Uh, hmm. Then it'll no longer be fun. What if it's Mac and PC? No, uh, he said all computing. Oh. Yeah, I think I'd go for platform yeah, exclusives. Yeah, platform exclusives. Easily. Mainly because I like playing PC what games. Are the ga- well, let's talk about what the games you want to play. Won't play, won't play Call of Duty. No Assassin's Creed. No Grand Theft Auto. Play. No Grand Theft Auto. GTA. That's the Madden. Fine. Okay. No Dance Central. No, no Dance Central. Oh, wait, no, no, that's exclusive. Although he was talking all time. Like, if you think about not being able to play GTA 3, that would be a bummer. I, I don't have no, I have no desire to play GTA 3 right now. I'm talking He's about saying back in time, eight though. years ago. Huh. I wouldn't be able to play Bastion. I love Bastion. Wouldn't be able to play Portal 2. It's true. Wouldn't be able to play Left 4 Dead. Or Portal 1. Or Team matter. Fortress. This is very true. That's okay. I, I live with that. <laughs> um, what's what's the multiplayer stuff? So your multiplayer game would be Halo. Or I mean, Starcraft. I mean, mine, I guess. mine would be Halo for Sim sure. City. Wow. Ooh, SimCity. Platform exclusives seem to be the clear winners here. Clear Especially winner. coming into a new console generation. New console generation oh, yeah. is golden time yeah, for yeah, platform yeah, yeah, exclusives. Yeah. Um, no Batman. Uh, Although, oddly, oh, for, for Sony, it's usually backloaded for their exclusives. Like, a lot of their awesome stuff usually comes out that's late. true. Because they have those first-party studios that spend seven years making a freaking game. Well, you'd be able to play Arkham City because it was a it was an Xbox 360 exclusive at the beginning. No. Same thing for Mass Effect. Mm, was it? Mass Effect sure? was an Xbox Mass exclusive. Effect, Mass yes. Effect was. Arkham... Ar- I don't think Arkham was. No. no. Arkham Asylum, not Arkham City. I'm pretty sure that was simultaneous PS3, 360. It was at least simultaneous PC and Xbox. I would huh. call that firmly multi-platform. <sighs> That's a real good game. Um, and then you'd also lose all the indie stuff, though, too. So you know Meat Boy? No Fez? Well, Meat Boy well could, Fez for a while. Well, you'd be able to play on Xbox. Initially. For six months, Yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's good enough. Yeah, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on this <laughs> yeah. one. You've convinced me. I was going to say nothing but third party, nothing but... Uh, uh, pl- I think I think the system, agnostic. the time time based exclusives works in our advantage in this situation. It gives you a window. Dark Souls, Demon Souls, no Dark Souls though. It's dark times, dark. Yeah. no XCOM, no Walking Dead. I would have missed all of my favorite games of the last year if I didn't play part multi platform games. I could have lived without Walking Dead. Oh, fuck you, Wes. I'm gonna play another question. Get this horrible taste of Fenlon out of my mouth. Hey there, Norman Will. It's Marcus from Tucson, Arizona. Bit of hometown trivia is that you would call someone from Arizona an Arizonan, not an Arizonian. So be sure to remember that. Now, I'm curious as to what your ideal smartphone would contain. It could be any mashup of any smartphones and their features that exist today, or features that you would like to see included in smartphones that have not yet been integrated. This could have anything to do with its operating system or its hardware, but be sure to keep it a little realistic. Thanks, guys. Just me being curious about what two masters of technology could come up with. Y'all do a fantastic show and always be testing. Bye. Sorry, Wes. 
That's the second time I've heard that question, and I realized that I didn't listen to it either time because as soon as he says the Arizona thing, I just think bullshit in my head, and then I. Forget <laughs> what, to what do you think the, the proper collective noun is for Arizona residents? I mean, until today, I thought it was Arizonian, but apparently there is a USS Arizonan, so that's that's pretty strong. I always thought it was Zonies, like Arizonies. That's real close to Bronies. Yeah. Do you know that Gabe Newell's a Brony? I'm not surprised. Did not know. Yeah. Um, wow. I, uh, uh, so I, uh, I've thought about this. Some. Okay. Okay. I would take uh, the keyboard from Windows Phone, the software keyboard. I would take the mail client, the Gmail client from Android, Chrome from Android. Um, which I would just take all the Google apps from Android. Let's be real. Google Now, I would take. Um, and then I would take the app ecosystem from iOS and the OS from, from iOS, and I would jam them into an iPhone 5 I with want, NFC. I want the hardware keyboard from my old Samsung Black Deck. Oh, fuck. I, I want... Uh, I'm turning you down. I want, I want uh, a device that on the back is probably half as thin as the iPhone 5, and the back is titanium. So it's light and sturdy and real firm. So not so, scratchy. And not scratchy. And because of made titanium, it's not easy to bend that much. So it can be thinner and still fit in my pocket. I like this form factor. I think I would chop off the top part of the phone. Mm -hmm. so it, I don't even think it needs to be that tall. But I do like a 16 by 9 screen. I wish I had a translucent screen that I could pull out from the side and use for augmented reality stuff. Because I would never do that. It would be really cool if you could. All right. Pushes were horses. I've got a <sighs> would you rather from a Reddit user okay. to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ooh, topical. Reddit user Synanon says, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized predators or one predator-sized duck? And Arnold mm. says, I would choose the one predator-sized duck instead of dealing with 100 duck-sized predators. I've already fought a predator-sized predator, so I'm confident I could handle the duck. That's, and you know what? I believe that him. That is absolutely the right answer. And I believe him. Um, I am going to... I didn't drag in... I'm the, sure he took it seriously, too. That is a 100% serious answer to a serious question. Uh, I'm looking for the outro song file, but I guess that'll do it for us today. Uh, if you have a question, again, the podcast answer address is... Uh, question address is podcastattested.com. Uh, keep your questions short, under 45 seconds. And make sure you don't sound like you're, you're you know... Uh, fighting a predator, predator while you record this question. Uh, today's outro is brought to you by, I think, KJN, but I'm not entirely certain. I'm looking right now. Um, oh, I'm going to the bottom of the page. It's going so slowly. Oh, I'm, Keep on filling time. Keep on filling time. Just, let's just say KJN is, the, is today's outro uh, viewer. Why is our website so damn slow? KJN, I was right. Uh, uh, Wesley Fenlon, uh, Norman Chan, thank you as always for coming by the show. Um, Wes, do you have anything to plug? Have you written anything for Wirecutter or anything lately? Nope. Anything for us you want to plug? Talk about uh, cheap monoprice monitors. We have a short post up about monoprice doing a basically their version of one of those Korean 27-inch 1440p. Yes. I and are they guaranteeing pixels and stuff like that? Five five or fewer dead pixels. That's not bad on a 2560 by 1440 monitor, whatever the resolution is. Yep. So 350 bucks for the monoprice one? 390. 390. That's not Which a bad deal. Which is basically what you pay on eBay. Um, so you're, pay, you're basically just paying a little bit, a tiny bit more and getting a guarantee and a place a to return For a it. warranty, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Norm, anything for you? Uh, no, it's good. For the Harrison Post started today, or Tuesday. Uh, so you should definitely check that out. Harrison's doing twice. Harrison Cricks of uh, Bullpen Props is doing twice monthly posts uh, as he builds us something awesome. And I'm not going to tell you what. You have to go read it to see what he's building us. Uh, and today's outro is brought to you by KJ. And thank you, as always, for listening to this only test. Stay tuned for fake outtakes. We'll be right back. Hi there. I didn't see you. Test it. Sure, this will fit in cargo pants. You should not be wearing cargo pants. Stand by, don't wear cargo pants. What do you hate about the Watchmen, Wes Fenlon? Everything but the opening credits. Wow, the opening credits are really good. The opening credits are phenomenal. Um, I think he did. Is it the you, is it the pirate comic being removed that I can't you no, object to? Discussion of why no. I, why not? I, did, I would see it too much. You would what?
I would see too much. You oh. would see too much. Well, see. then can we talk about Al Roker see. pooping his pants instead? Let's talk about Al Roker pooping his pants. So, Wait, so, so Norm hates Watchmen more than me. I no, I don't it. hate Watch, Watch, Watchmen. No, at all. I, I, I used to think I, I cannot be part of this conversation. No, okay. why, hold on. You have to. Say, you can't just cop, cop out and then not explain why you're not being part of the conversation. I can't be part of this conversation because. It, it, your opinion is so much better than either Wes's or mine? Yes. We'll, we'll go with that one. <laughs> We're both assholes. So you think it's a masterpiece? I don't think it's a masterpiece. He thinks it's Zack Snyder's finest work. I don't think it's his finest work either. I, I think he totally fucked up the villain, um, just in terms of casting and presentation. Like, he was so... Ozymandias was so clearly evil, like, from the beginning, that he looked... E everything about him oh, looked so evil. It totally fucked his character he arc. He looks like evil Braga. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a really n nice little dude wearing super evil clothing and acting suspiciously the whole movie. See, in the in the when I read the book, I thought he was super evil too. I totally got that Ozymandias was evil. I I thought they messed up his character arc, um, and I thought it the the slow mo like glorifying violence also was very like tonally incorrect um, compared to the comic. But the I think the slow mo I I can see that, but I. Took the slow mo as, hey, here are my favorite. Sh here are the things I think represent the Watchmen comic, and I'm going to present them in a way that you that is going to hit you over the fucking head with, oh my god, this came from the comic book. It was very much a extremely um, accurate surface level representation of the comic that I think didn't get to. Oh, Joey's doing more push ups. What like what the, what was actually good about Watchmen? So okay. it, it looked like Watchmen. But. So let's talk about Al Roker. No, Norm's going to do some push-ups. We'll, we'll talk about Watchmen for 10, 10 or 12 push-ups worth. Um, I, I, I liked that they took out the dumb space squid. Yeah, I was fine with that change. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I thought, I thought the end was pretty good. I thought it was okay. I thought it was a nice fight at the end. The uh, Malin Ackerman was not great. Malin Ackerman is never great. That is a fair point. I would agree with that. Um, what's her name? The woman who played Malin Ackerman's mom was, was Carly. awesome. Carly also Lugino. not great. You didn't think so? I thought terrible. She, I thought she captured the terrible aspect of of, of uh, the original Silk Spectre. Anyway, hey guys, did you know that Al Roker pooped his pants? I've heard this. Was it on camera? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said that he was at the White House. It was right after he had gastric bypass surgery. Oh, this is what I assume. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that part, but right. I assume that it was right after he had the surgery where his he did not have as, as you much don't have control full control over your GI of your tract. The entire tract, seeing as much of the tract is removed, right? The digestive part. So, so he, he just goes straight through. He was, was this, in his Bush White House. Uh, I would ba assume Obama. so, probably. No, no, no. Because no. oh, gastric had, bypass was a, was long, a long time, time ago. ago. Okay. All right. So. Um, he. He said that he was in the White House walking down the hall and thought, oh, I'll just crop dust the shit out of someone. And then, uh, you know, something it was more than he expected came out. How, what was his... What's the reaction? What was this? Uh, what do you do when you shit yourself in the White the House? He planned. Yeah. He went to the bathroom, uh, took off his underpants, wadded them up, threw them in the trash at the White House, and went commando for the rest of the day. Wow. Well, what else are you, you going to do? The, the entire range of visual images that we did not need. need. <laughs> You know, what he really needed was he needed the new Dean Kamen invention that plugs straight into your stomach and pulls food out. Is this a CS thing? No, Dean Kamen has an uh, inventor of the Segway. Inventor of the Segway. Ginger. I heard also, about this. And also um, devices to purify water to turn pee into drinkable water. Okay. Um, has now a emergency a diet piece of dieting technology that plugs into your stomach and then extracts food from your stomach. Where does it go? And... Puts back in the fluids that you need. Uh, okay, you, you're. I don't understand. Explain again. Okay, there's. You take have an operation. Okay, where you basically punch a hole in your stomach. That seems like a bad with idea. With a fist, <laughs> and and then you attach a tube to it when you need to. Or I okay. Guess there, there's some type of valve and port, and you can press a button and it will extract food from your stomach that you've consumed. Yeah. Before it is completely digested and is absorbed. Okay. Well, because food doesn't get absorbed in your stomach. It does, that happens in the lower well, intestine for the most part. Well, the process yeah. happens the moment it touches your tongue yeah, all the way down to the lower uh, small intestines. Well, and and then, then, but most of it, yes, is in the stomach and the large intestines. And then it 
puts back in the things that you need for your stomach to continue working. The shit that plants crave? Uh, I hope it's not Rondo, but yeah. <laughs> yep. This real, is, real invention. This is this is this. I, I feel like pictures. I'm missing some some important details here, but just on the surface, well, it sounds need? like a terrible, terrible what more idea. Do you need? Is it usable on a Segway? I do not believe so. Do I, do, you, I also do not believe gyros are involved. Do you think if you had this pump and you went euros? to the to the sure definitely euros? If you had this pump and you went to a buffet in Vegas, do you think they'd make you leave if you were like pumping if you were gorging yourself and then pumping it out into buckets? I'm like, hey, can you dispose of this bucket, please? I think anything involving bu- buckets in a Vegas buffet <laughs> is an automatic Frowned out the upon. door. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they, Would they, you like to see a diagram of how this device works? Yeah. Yes, I would. It does look like a machine with a tube. Pumped that in your bi- stomach. It looks like a colostomy bag for your stomach. I, I think that it's similar to that. This is a terrible idea. Why, why not just eat less? Isn't that easier, ultimately speaking? I mean, I guess there are people with medical conditions that require, maybe this is better than a gastric bypass or a lap band or any of that kind of stuff, but this sounds like a terrible idea. Um, Recently ran into patent. Did they have a time limit on the Wicked Spoon Buffet? No time limit. You could stay in there as long as you wanted? We stayed there until we could not move, and then once we could move, we decided to get out. (laughs) We, We also had a conversation of what's worse, because someone's got to have eaten so much. And, you know, when you go to the buffet, not all the foods can be fresh. Some of those crab legs, king crab legs, have been sitting The, bo- the ones at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, so some, someone's going to have a bad reaction. What do you do if you have a bad reaction and you have to upchuck and you do it at the buffet table? It's not, that's frowned Do you upon. then... Are you then ex- <laughs> excused out? Like, do, do, can you go back? Like, I've, I've just, I, I, it's all gone now. I, but I paid for the buffet. I need to get more. I bet that we have a listener who has been exposed to this situation. So what happens? I'm sure they cover it up, and do you get to move tables? Do you think like, the janitor comes with the sawdust, like in elementary school? I, they have to. Like the and, and smell, the what, super cedar smell. What's worse though is if are you what, is is it worse being the guy who upchucked and then goes back to the line? Yeah, is this wipes, an opportunity? Wipes off and then goes back to the line to get more. <laughs> Oh. Or is it worth the guy sitting at the table next to him who continues eating? I think we have to clarify, is this worse like for your soul or just like for your day? Because <laughs> it's definitely worse for your day if you're the dude next to the puke table. Right. Because I, I asked for you a refund at that point. I asked for a refund at that You did nothing wrong. Like, I'm, you were just enjoying is... your buffet. And you're in a very vulnerable position in that you just stuff yourself also with a lot and of right, food. Right. You're a ticking gonna, time bomb. That's going to totally you fuck up your day. <laughs> but it's not going to stick with you forever. Well, what if what if what if it sets off a puke chain? Like, remember uh, you were in elementary school and some oh, kid yeah. would puke in the back of the bus and, and then like the it would you go off the fucking bus and like seven other kids would throw up. Right. Pretty soon, it's the Exorcist in there. I mean, if that happened in the in in a, in a Vegas buffet, it could like they might have to close the place for a few days to clean it out. Last thing you want is it's to eating some bone marrow. Yeah, mixed with some cowby and some some delicious roast duck. Yeah, and I and think then, it depends on if it's projectile vomit or if it's kind of like guilty puke on your plate and like immediately try to wipe it up with napkins. Oh, you mean vomit. the the the. Almost comes out of your mouth, and then you swallow it back in. I've done that before. Oh my god! <laughs> Not at a buffet, but just like was sick and had to give a talk, and I was like, "Oh god, I'm gonna throw up." You know, and then he makes the horrible it's noises. Not fun. No, it was bad. Um, I did some really, really sick. aggressive vomiting over the holiday break. I got the norovirus, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, like that is that is that is the kind of throwing up that you usually don't do until you're in a position to not remember how bad you threw up. Like the day that we did the Jedi mind trick testing thing, that was some. That was a. That was the last. Do you remember that? Probably I remember not. It. I didn't throw up that much. Or I didn't throw up at all. Actually, <laughs> I didn't throw up that much. He says, "Yeah, um, yeah, it's not good throwing up aggressively." And and if if you think you have the stomach flu, you should go to the bathroom. Is is my advice to you? You really start to hate the world when your throat is just raw, but you can't stop throwing up. This wasn't this wasn't that kind of thing. It wasn't like prolonged. It was like two good rounds of just thinking I was gonna blow up a kidney or something. You know, like the dog was coming into the bathroom. She's like, "Are you okay? I'm gonna lick your feet. I think you might be dying." Um. All right. Let's get lunch. Yeah, lunch sounds great. See you guys next week. <laughs>